Boom. Let's see. There we go, fellas, fellas, fellas. What's up? So we're here with the man, the myth, the legend. To me, anyways. Love this guy. He's awesome. Everybody knows Cooley. What's up, Bubbles? What's up, Extimus? What's going on, man? Brent. Yo, yo. Jonathan Dice, Turkey Man. So what's up, Kurt? Uh, Cooley? What are you? Uh, what are you up to this evening besides talking to Sweet Phil? You've been uh, streaming all day today, haven't you? Jesus. Yep. Yeah, I've been streaming. I uh, I went all out. I tried to make this all look all professional for the for the cast over here, man. I got a video playing in the background. I was just saying, I wish I'd have done some dueling footage. I wasn't even sure this shit was gonna work, man. I uh, I just kind of threw it together, and it looks all right. It looks it looks like we know what we're doing. Right. And, and plus, if people are like, I'm sick of looking at Coley's face. They got like <laughs> Neil Thock runs going yeah. on in the background. You know, but, uh, not bad. Yeah, that looks not pretty bad. cool. Yeah, I, I, I just got a gray like a uh, stone background up behind us. That's kind of one of my uh, go tos where I used to use it for thumbnail, thumbnails and intros and all that kind of stuff. You know, first ever time doing this type of thing, so you know, I think it looks pretty good. And uh, I'm glad. Thank you for uh, doing this with me as well, Cooley. Yeah, I think this is a really good idea, man. Um, you know, I think that, uh, that doing a cast and just having conversations and stuff is like just something that we don't really get to see a lot of in like the the diablo community or really like arpg community as much as much as we would like to i am i have heard that there's like some other ones out there that are pretty dope but no one that's doing d2 content creators and talking and shooting the breeze so i think that's uh i think that's dope man C congrats to you for for uh, theorizing and putting this in action, man. Yeah, I think yeah, I just just you know thought of a good idea. It kind of works out for other people, and who doesn't want to know a little bit more about their uh, creators, the people they watch? You know, you can't interact too much in the comments. Uh, you probably kind of get the same thing where it's like you wake up in the morning, and you have like three hundred comments, and you're like, well, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these. Uh, you know, so. This is what I'm like. I, this is this is what I do. I'm like, I like what this guy said. That's awesome. I'm gonna love it. And then I'm like, wow, this guy's an asshole. Ban him from channel. That's I, there's basically two reactions that I get. It's like I don't think people know that that can happen to him. Like you know what I mean? That's it's uh -huh. interesting. They say some like degrading something, and then it's just like, and then none of their comments ever show up again. It's like, oh well, well. Yeah, I don't. We're encouraging a good community. I don't, I don't think I've been called an a-hole as many times as I have in the last month, like probably in the last decade, <laughs> honestly. That's, the good thing about D2R is it's brought back the love and the attention to the game. It's also brought back some prideful a-holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the, it's the uh, internet, you know, keyboard warrior type thing, you know. <laughs> but. Yeah, no, that's, it's, it, all in all, though, I was just talking about this the other day, like the, the community and D2R from what I've seen and like, it, it's been so much better. I feel like a lot of people have like, we've all kind of aged with the game and like, we're all kind of grown ass men now. You know what mm. I mean? Like we like, and it's, I, I absolutely love the feeling of the community in D2R, like playing on Battle.net and seeing still so much generosity and like, you know, it, it's, it's kind of refreshing, man. Yeah, it is uh very true that uh, it is kind of the few and far between you, you kind of, I try not to dwell on the negative ones, but you are correct, like, with yeah. people, uh, there was always a, a large aspect of it, you know, people just willing to help out the other people, the uh, newer people, or people that are just struggling, can't find that one item they're looking for type of stuff, so, definitely, uh, definitely not a bad community, it's just, uh, <laughs> those ones just burrow into your brain when you get those negative comments, but we, I'm getting better at pushing them away, I'm getting better at pushing them away. Yeah, man, there's uh, there's certain people that I think there's just go through. That's what works for them. That's what works for them. You know, mm -hmm. it's like that's you, you ever seen it like uh, like you hear about all the time about, oh, you know, it's usually happens with with a different gender, right? Like, oh, this girl's all about attention or, you know, or whatnot. Sometimes it's, like it's not just it's not just to say it's not restricted to a certain gender. Sometimes people the attention, it's like good or bad. Just remember my name. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Get fired up about me, but uh, you know, it's. I think. I think with this and just about anything you do, it's like you gotta focus on like the positivity. You know, it's so. It's so easy sometimes to get wrapped up in like the negative feedback, negative, negative things. And not to say you shouldn't listen to a lot of stuff, but like, you know, being able to 
look at and appreciate the good things that people get out of what you do is like is really cool. It's one of the things that uh, you know when I started, I I started making PVP content probably like close to a year and a half ago now, something like that. And when I first loaded uploaded my first like shitty quality dueling video, I would have never expected to get over like ten subscribers. But you know the fact that like people want to talk with me about this stuff and you know it it's uh it's kind of cool man and you know i've i've been really careful especially with a game as complicated as diablo 2 to like never never try to be a know-it-all with this game like there's <laughs> there's so much stuff yeah, yeah, yeah there's so much stuff that like you know, you I, I literally <laughs> learned some stuff today that I never knew. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm like, it's, it's crazy to think that, like, after so long, you can still learn so much about this game. You know? Um, yeah, you definitely. Yeah, it's it's. I was just going to say, yeah, you go definitely came in uh, with with your channel. You're probably the only person that's like coming in PVP style. Um, obviously, I was uh, personally, I was definitely inspired by watching like Dabrunsky and DJ Waters and like Llama stuff like that. Uh, Nexius, uh, Extimus, who was just up in the chat legend right there too. Uh, I was definitely inspired by their stuff and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, obviously branch out and not be the copier guy or whatever, but you were definitely right down. You were the only PVP guy there was and that definitely, uh, I don't even know necessarily, I don't think and you can comment on this if it was a smart move, but it was just like, it was just who you were. And that's why I think your channel, obviously you've been doing all right for yourself for sure. So it's definitely cool that you uh, nailed that, that market, that whole side of the game, that aspect. Well, there were some other people before me too, that were doing, that were doing PVP. A lot of people would just okay. upload, um, you know, a lot of people would just upload duels and stuff. That was very common. You know, it's, it's something that it's difficult to upload like a meth runs video and not explain anything right like you know what i mean it's a lot easier to for people to upload dueling videos where they're just crushing it in public games and like it's easy to kind of see what's going on like no explanation needed you know what i mean like <laughs> oh wow this barb is insane there's also uh the heroes of tristram uh that used to you know put together pvp builds the problem i think with pvp especially like in the early like in the early days you got to figure i mean if you've been if you've been playing this since like the days of 1.10 even like we were friggin teenagers probably like when you know when that dropped and you have like a whole bunch of pride that exists at that age and it was a different time like it was a different time i think so that i think there was a lot of people that when they got into pvp especially especially the people like i was i was probably one of these people back then like you play single player or you play you know solo self-finding and you develop habits in the game and you think you're good you know, you think these are good habits that you've developed until you go up against somebody in the blood more and they absolutely shit stomp you. And like, you're like, <laughs> why? I like what? Like, what is happening? Why? You're a hacker. Why are you? You know, how are you doing so much? You know, but it's like the it, truth be told. It's like I think that it, it's easier to have more emotions about that when we're teenagers and we feel like we're good at the game. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. I feel like that bred some some interesting emotions that made it difficult for a long time for like. You know, it, it, it was such a, a prideful, uh, you know, feel to PvP at one point in D2 history. And I feel like you kind of, a lot of people that tried to do PvP, if you were going to put yourself out there, you almost, like, had to be this, like, know-it-all, I'm the best. You felt like nobody would listen to you unless you were just the greatest at what you did. And, like, with me, again like my whole when i first started putting my face to videos i'm like you can't even pretend you know it all with you know a pvp build because i'd been in the more i had my ass kicked by like many people you know what i mean i knew what i was good against bad against i knew some players who were just savage and were so much better than me and i'm like you know so i kind of with me, I just had to be careful with, you know, with how I went about it. I'm like, look, this is what I play. This is what I enjoy. You know, here are some builds that are fun. Uh, here's basically how to run them. And just kind of it's it's hard to, like, fully teach PVP and how to do something in one video or like, you know, because there's so many answers. You're dealing with other people. You're not dealing with like a with a script, like with a with a game that's programmed <laughs> to respond in a, in a certain way. Like, right. Yeah, you're you dealing that, yeah. with people that are. 
you're dealing with people that you know if if healing pots are are bm they're gonna they're gonna wait for their battle orders to run out chuck their life charms in a corner and rep their life back twice as fast as you would imagine like who would have thought you know what i mean like it's just insane stuff mm. that humans can do yeah i don't <laughs> like, uh, you can't really tell people to prepare for yeah i don't uh, <laughs> i don't pvp but there's probably like that life charm thing you just said, uh, it makes sense now that you mentioned it, but I, that would have never even crossed my mind because I'm not a PvP or I'm like a grinder magic find type person. Uh, so that's kind of funny. Uh, and I did want to mention, I, there was a question that, that I had. Uh, you brought up how about people playing, you know, if you played back in the 1.10 and stuff like that. How early um, necessarily did you start playing? Because I can remember personally myself, and this was before I even owned the game, I was, there was a group of friends I had that hung out at this girl's house, and she had an older brother who had Diablo 2, and I originally walked into the room and was like, oh, well, what is this game you're playing, you know? And then all of a sudden, this group of like 10 friends, all the dudes would be hanging out with their older brother, sitting over, like leaning on his uh, his computer chair, watching him pl like slaughter cows back in the day with like the Nova Sorceress, you know? And I can remember sitting down, he'd, he would get up, he's like, yeah, go do whatever you want, whatever. Um, and it was, that was before you could buy mana pots when I, when, uh, from the vendors, that was like a long time ago. Yeah, that was like early and days. I don't, early days I'm not sure days. if it was six months or a year after that when I, when I got Diablo two, but yeah, that's, I did take like a decade off. I'll be honest. There was like a, at least a oh, decade yeah. in there. Uh, then I bought Diablo three. You never three. stop playing D two. You stop having people to play with. Is what it <laughs> yeah. Is. Well, I, I played a lot of solo to be honest. But yeah, that, that would be like I had a buddy who was in the navy. He he would come home. He'd message me like, "Hey, get back on D two, you know." Uh, and then I'd play with him for a few months, and he'd get deployed again or whatever. But uh, but yeah, that was back in the day. That was crazy. Not having mana pots for for the game. Like, what what do you remember from back in the day? How it was different, and like, when did you start playing? Oh my god! I don't even know if people are ready to hear all the shit I was doing back in the day. Well, you don't have to say don't everything. Like this is you got to keep it like rated PG thirteen or something here. Don't get too crazy. <laughs> oh no, man! I, I'll tell you. Like I was always, uh, you know, I, I was talking about um, what, one of the funniest stories that I remember. I was just talking about this earlier on my stream. Was um, like the first time I started up single player. I remember starting playing with a barb. And I even I remember his name. I named him Disciple. I thought I was cool, you know. And then I remember the first time I logged on to Battle.net. It was open Battle.net. This is back when, you know, back in the days when the D2 game allowed TCP IP and connections with other servers and stuff. Well, there was this like, you know, sort of Wild West of, of Battle.net. It was the open Battle.net. Yeah, I remember that a little bit, and like, yeah. I mean, I, I never really knew at that time. I didn't know there's a difference between closed battle net and open battle net. I just saw like play online. I'm like, oh, multiplayer. I'm like, cool, let's do it. You know, well, I remember stepping into a game with, you know, my single player dude. I'd leveled him to like level 83 or something. It was uh, it was so great. You know, I was like, man, my barb is the man. And like this was back in the days. I'm pretty sure this this might still be the case on open battle. I'm not sure I haven't played it in a while, but like the the host of the game like whoever created the game could edit anything in the game like they could even edit your character stats your you know your skills hmm. and like, all of this like stuff. your character not their character but literally yeah. yours your character yeah and i remember <laughs> Never stepping seen in that i remember stepping into a game i remember stepping into a game and i was like Oh man, I can't wait to show off this barb. And like this guy hacks all my stats down to like five <laughs> or something. And I worked so hard to get to level 83. And then suddenly my barb has like 200 life. I'm like, what? What what just happened? He's like, yeah, how's that barb? And he's like, you know, some <laughs> like, you know, it, it, my all my skills go down to like one or something. I was like, what? I was like, you know, I, I remember exiting the game. I was like, maybe if I save and exit, then it, I'll just go back to single player and I'll have my bar back. And I go back in a single player and like my bar was just eternally neutered. Wow. And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, battle that's terrible. I was like, I'm never going on again. You know, I, I, I didn't know about like Jamela Hero Editor or there was something else it was called back in the day. But like, uh, yeah, it was just some crazy stuff, wow. man. Like, yeah, I didn't know crazy about stuff. anything like that. There was a, uh... 
I kept, I, I wish I still had these files. Like, I wish I could pull up the old, like, tower and computer I had from back in the day. But I did something, like, where I was just, I was, I think maybe I was just going to tra- try to transfer an item from one single player character to another. So I was going to go try the drop in uh, open battle net, you know, type thing. And I went into a game, yep. and, and there was a guy just, oh, hey, who is this guy joining our game? And uh, I was just like, I'm just transferring things. He's like, oh, do you want this stuff? And he's throwing out, you know like a bow that had like 3,700% enhanced damage and like 1,300 increased attack speed on it and stuff like that, you know? Uh, and I had just all these like hacked items on, on this one character. And it was kind of funny because I obviously, I didn't know anything about it. I never dabbled in it after that either, but I just thought it was crazy to have all these random like 200% faster walk run belt and you know stuff like that that I got from oh, Open yeah. BattleNet. Guy, he's just throwing them out because obviously you can just... He probably knew how to just click one button and get them, but I was like, I mean, I was probably 13 or 14 at the time, I guess. I, I can't remember, but. Yeah, man, that was, that was some old days of D2. But I, I remember when I did figure out, like, what the what the real battle net was, you know what I mean? Like, the closed battle net where, you know, I, I was just blown. I was like, wait, and my friend told me about it. He's like, he's like, yeah, man, you should play on, uh, you, should, you know, you should click on Battle.net and not, you know, open multiplayer or whatever it is. And I was like, wait, so people can't like hack your stats and they can't come in with like hacked items with 200 percent faster run walk and all of this stuff. And he's like, well, I mean, <laughs> this is also the Wild West days of Battle.net. So like he's like, well, uh, <laughs> less often you're still you've still <laughs> got a young mind. But uh, no, it's not like open battle that, you know, then go figure this was like in the time of like white rings and stuff that like, you know, the imports into into battle net where <laughs> yeah, they did have a ring that was like 100 percent faster run walk and like IAS and all of this stuff. But at least that stuff wasn't supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was a Blizzard sad day when it all poofed. did stuff about it when it all poofed one day. Yeah. That was wild when, uh, you yeah. know, I got like 200 SOJs and the. Uh, like you know, a hundred hex charms, and uh, you come on one day, and they're just all everything's gone. Literally, everything's gone. Great, <laughs> the great rust storm, man. That's what they called it. It was called the rust storm. Oh, really? I, I hadn't heard was, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I think it was, I think it was a, a term coined by Blizzard. Mm. I shit you not. Like I think they called it the rust storm, and uh, it was. They, they basically they did they put certain pieces of code in place that would go through and look for certain items and delete them. But they also had to manually go into certain accounts and like pull stuff out of them and like delete them. Um, You know, like certain items were so bad that they jammed up people's accounts. So they would like, they would look at the, the stuck accounts and go in and like rip the bad items out of them. Like, Hmm. you know, and it it was back in the day, they were kind of fair about it. Cause like, you don't really know how people got those items. It might not have been the person that created it. You know what I mean? They could have just got it, got, you know, picked it up on the ground or something. Some, so they wouldn't like, you know, but they had a good way of like, you know, finding out who was doing that Mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, All the, all the stuff I had, I I had uh, just traded for everything. But, uh, I mean, obviously, I knew that, that hex charms were hacked. I knew that the white w- rings and white gloves were hacked, you know? Like, I knew that that was not real stuff, and I traded for it. But I knew I knew that there was something going on uh, when uh, somebody must have been... They knew something was coming, or who knows. But I had, like, a six-socketed Hydra bow that was, like, with the... Uh, 15 per, you know a superior 15 percent enhanced damage or whatever and the guy gave me like 30 hex charms for it and i was like oh my gosh this is awesome and that was like a couple of weeks before everything poofed so like that guy somehow he must have known that like that was coming because there was no way like i was expecting to get like a quarter like not even a quarter like a fifth of that like yep. a tenth of that and and i was like oh my god i'm rich what is this guy doing and then yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, somebody from my chat just mentioned that uh, at one point there was a mass banning of people that used a program that allowed them to have multiple windows open. Like they used to, they used to really look for that stuff. It kind of scares me about uh, add-ons with with D two R. It's a different team running this now. You know what I mean? Like it's still Blizzard, mm-hmm. but like you know, there's there's always add-ons and stuff, and I always get really weary of them. You know, I, I haven't dared to put any on myself, but like, you know, oh, yeah, I haven't tried nothing you remember, either. Like, no, no map pack or nothing you like remember, that. Well, I mean, even with that, like that will clearly get you banned. Right. But like if you think about stuff like, um, 
you know, you, you remember the screen extension you used to use for like for regular D2? It would like extend your screen or whatnot. No, like like, like make it widescreen you're talking about or. Yeah, basically, like, you know, it, it, it's there's there's other like cosmetic stuff, I guess, that people were talking about, like changing colors to certain things and like, oh, that's yeah, got yeah, them yeah. banned already. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like these guys are on it. But like they I mean, even back in the day, they were they were like shoot first ask questions later like when it comes to when it comes to mods on that stuff i don't mess around with like you know with uh with anything like that man i i just wouldn't dare especially with how much time it takes like they have done a good job so far i'm not gonna lie i'll be completely honest with you on battle.net for d2r some of us have seen bots going and like the next day though they're not there Hmm. like yeah i've seen so ones i was i've I was seen happy to see that i've seen bail bots going but uh one or two here and there but to not you mention it probably in the last couple of weeks i haven't seen one this was a few weeks prior to that even so uh yeah yeah the, but the, obviously they didn't react they weren't like the ones in d2 how they're like spamming websites in the chat and stuff like that they were like on the down low they weren't saying nothing they were just you know running running bail real quick you know like way faster like nobody could guess right every time like i know that you can map read the first level and the you know the second level you can kind of guess but you don't get there perfect every time but uh oh yeah it's crazy man so have i, you, I had have you learned all your tiles i, I heard you, you i heard your what are you oh, yeah, drinking tonight oh, oh i just lowered my volume on my headphones i thought i broke something my <laughs> <laughs> I get... uh well uh i've got i've got a nice mix in here uh you know i was just i was just saying i'm not exactly sure what the what the guidelines on uh where i'm streaming i'm streaming on facebook gaming right now i'm not oh. sure what the guidelines they have on what i can say that i'm drinking but i'm gonna call it apple juice oh, and uh okay. you know it, or or anything that you would mix with you know that would taste good with uh with cranberry oh i, for, uh, I forgot you did mention that at the start of stream my apologies <laughs> i didn't I, who knows do, do, care, do you this. think that facebook has that that type of uh i guess you would have known from the terms of service or whatever but uh i doubt it i i doubt it well i'm gonna go ahead and I, I i'm it. gonna risk it all because this is worth it not that it's that worth it but i got a i got a pre-mixed old-fashioned it's backwards but i found a little half pint of a pre-mixed old-fashioned that's what we're rocking and, oh man! And I'm sipping her from the 1981 Rose Bowl, Michigan, uh, rocks glass here. Let's get after it, son. Oh sweet, Michigan. That's a great. That's, uh, uh, that's... A, a great Salvation Army find right there. For it was probably a oh, dollar sweet. or two. Nice. Now that's where you're. Is that where you're from? Is Michigan? Uh yeah yeah I'm like uh probably a half hour forty five minutes outside of Detroit I guess. So I'm not gonna get in too much detail. Not getting my area code or nothing, but <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> no nah, man, I'm from uh, I'm from up in the the easternmost, northernmost state up in Maine, dude. We uh, yeah, we were just talking about the the uh, subtle differences between the Maine accent. I don't think I have a Maine accent on most words that I say, but like the subtle difference between the Maine accent and the and the Massachusetts accent. We all drop our as every once in a while, but. You know, there's there's a bit more of ignorant an ignorant tone, I think, to some words it made her say, but it's a fun area. It's a fun area, man. Huh. Fun, uh, it's great. See, I got the I've I've been told I got the Midwestern accent, but I can't put my finger on it. Obviously, other people can because they call me out for it. But what do you uh, anyone in check and throw it out there too? What do you think? Uh, what is the mid Midwestern accent? What do I? What do people from the Midwestern accent do? I got one for you. If you uh, if you watch UFC or whatnot, um, you could you could just reiterate what Brock Lesnar said after he beat Frank Mir in match two. And if it sounds like it, then uh, you know then you got it. Uh, you got to say Frank Mir had a horseshoe up his ass. You got to say you got to say. <laughs> All right, real life experiment going on real time here. <laughs> Well, is, it, is it like a lot like a yell he yelled it i can't remember i watched it but a long time he ago. was like oh man he is all fired up he's the type of guy who gets fired up over everything he's right, like right, break right. me or he had a horseshoe stuck up his ass <laughs> so i dug it out and i beat him over his head with it <laughs> i'd never laughed so hard after a ufc fight i was about in tears i i actually now, now that seeing you do it i remember it now like i feel like his is more even more midwestern than mine is 
Yeah, man, that guy is like straight Midwest. I, uh, how do you how do you say Minnesota? How do you say Minnesota? Minnesota? No, that's a that's a joke. That's a joke. Come on, it just uh, <laughs> I don't know, just Minnesota, Minnesota. Almost yeah, like almost like it's a D instead of a T. People. Minnesota. Yeah, you know, it's like. It's like the it's like the O with like the two dots over it or something. There's a different way of pronouncing this. Suda. Like, the O it. with the two dots, like the the you don't, uh, you don't Scandinavian carry the version. accent of your people. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, man, that's crazy though. So yeah, like we got the Midwest. We got what server do you play on when you if you play on Battle.net? Is it like do you play on West or do you play on or what? Well, like if you were when you when you were jamming on like D two. LOD. Yeah, I always uh, always played on East, with the exception of back in the day when I started off when I first started playing, because that uh, my friend's brother or whatever, you know, the guy that I know that's got me onto it. He played on West, and I didn't really know exactly why, but so I did back in the day, even though I'm technically like in the e like I'm Eastern time zone for time. Um, so I always played on East now and, and recently, but back, I used to play on West because, and the West too, back in the day, I think, could be wrong here, they had w more hacked items and better hacked items from what I remember. Aren't there, weren't there some that were only on West that were like way better? Yeah. Like the, West had all the same stuff as East and a few more, didn't they? Um, there were some things that were realm specific. There was like uh, fused uniques. That uh, like whiz gloves existed in the West. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember like, that. Those, yeah. those things were insane, man. Um, and then you had blood tree stump. Uh, what was it like? Blood tree stump armor or something? That was uh, I think that was East. But like the, the the days of the fused uniques, like that that was where like the different realms typically found different things, unless they were like imports, like. Oculus rings were like they existed on both realms because those were imports like, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, you know, there was like there was some weird stuff, but the I think whiz spike gloves still exist on on US West. Like, hopefully those people aren't letting their accounts expire. Have you been on? Have you checked out D2 LOD since D2R dropped? I have not touched it. No, I have not. <laughs> what's up? What's oh up? Oh, my God. You should see it. I it's just I, wild I, I West like crazy. I have some of the most ridiculous shit on my on my uh, US East account. And like, I mean, hybrid items. I mean, you've probably seen them in some of the videos, like hybrid items, 08 items, bugged stuff like that is just ancient at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? They've been around for years. You know what I mean? And it's got like a piece of history. So I always I try to log on to like keep them active. And you know what I mean? It's weird to see <laughs> some of like my level 99 duelers like with an expiration date on them. I'm like, Ew. oh my God, like I gotta, uh, it, but you go in and like look at the lobby and look in like the public games and stuff. I'm telling you, man, there was like five games up the other day. And I was like, kind of, I was like, oh man. Five total games. I, 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 it made me think of a couple of things. I was like, they could go a few different routes with this, right? Like, if not many people are playing D2 LOD now that D2R is a thing, they could, like, shut the servers down, which would suck. You know what I mean? Like, then, then we can kiss all of these, like, realm specific bugged items, you know, 08s and all of this stuff goodbye forever, which love them or hate them. They're a piece of D2 history. I don't think we should do that. Like, you know, but, uh, or they could like, and how crazy would this be? Make a server on D2R where they bring those guys over and it's like a separate hmm. thing. LOD, like, you know what I mean? New graphics, but all your <laughs> LOD characters from like, from bad on that. You know, that's it, how it would, crazy. Would it would be? be wild. Uh, I would put that on the, uh, I would bet money that's not going to happen realm. For, for that type yeah, of stuff here. but uh, but yeah it, it would be pretty wild that's crazy that there's like literally almost no games but i guess especially with like uh uh you know uh pod and pd2 and uh all you know all the other mods i though most people are probably that would play the normal old diablo 2 are probably over onto those mods i would i would suspect is is mainly what it is yeah, and I wonder, I wonder what all them bots are doing. What, what are all them people that used to run bots on Diablo two nonstop? What do you think they're up to nowadays, huh? 
running bots in like Probably WoW or something. Get him going on DTR if I had to guess. But... <laughs> Buying their nineteenth copy of Diablo Two Resurrected because their uh, all their well, copies well, are getting banned. Oh yeah, like that was. I mean, that's the thing too. Is like if you're if you're going in and you're checking out the hell game, like the games in hell difficulty, and like you still only see five games up, it probably suggests that a lot of people just aren't potting over there. It would make sense for them to stop anyway, right? Because like it's still the same company, and like a lot, some people don't know this. If you get if you get banned in like one Blizzard or or you know Battle.net game, you can get banned in all of them. So like. They ban your like IP address. Bots, uh, yeah, the, like they actually. I mean, they do a lot of stuff, right? Like educational piece, right here, right? They, yeah. they. I know nothing about you. getting banned, so. <laughs> this is oh, I, back in my day, man. I'm telling you, there was uh, <laughs> this guy, this no, little rascal over here. This, well, I, I haven't done it in a very, very long time. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of people that you know. Uh, back in the day, like map hack was a thing, you know what I mean? I feel like everybody had it on, you know, on uh, I might have dabbled, might have like, dabbled. It, I was gonna say, like, that was the most common one, I mean, exactly right. There's but there was a way what they would do is they would triangulate you, and you know, they, that's how they would, uh, like if you use let's say you used map hack on one account, right? Let's say you're like, all right, I'm gonna make this account, let's call it account one, and you know, great, I'm gonna use map hack only on this account. And then you log in like three months later and your account one, two, three, and four are banned, like, you know, locked out. And you're like, wait a minute, I, I only used it on this one account. They would triangulate you. And the way that they would do it is they collect like, I mean, and this is kind of the same. It's not just Blizzard. It's like any, any time you're linking up to an IP on anybody's server, they triangulate with, with a few things. You know, they, they not only hit your IP address and figure out, you know, where you're coming from, who's connecting. Um, but they also log your computer name and like what your computer is. From there, they also hit your CD key. So with those three pieces of information, they can be absolutely certain that any account that has logged on with those other two things, like, you know, like, yep, you're on the same CD key, you're on the same network. Like, you know what I mean? You're probably the same person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you've logged into all those accounts on the same CD key, you know, with the same IP, it, it's in the same computer name. Like, you know, they just say, OK, this is the exact same person. So all of those accounts <clears throat> that have logged on with that gone. Now, it, it was it was a different battle net, if you will. Right. Like the servers are different um, over there. They're kind of ancient. They're old. So. If someone, if they are still banning for botting, let's say over there, it's hard to tell if you it would ban your your D2R account, right? But the people that were and that are interested in D2R now, do you want to take that risk? Is that you know what I mean? Is that yeah? And there's uh, I would say there's, bet on it? there's probably no benefit to botting over there now because the the point yeah. of like bot they'd bot to get the items and sell them for sell a burr room for twenty bucks, sell a oculus for three dollars or whatever they did there's probably no money in it so like they, the what's the point of even spending the electricity to run the computer to do that at this point but yeah that's yeah. uh pr pretty yeah, wild really serious over here in my chat says uh he's like yeah he knew people for, who got banned for botting in d2 and then couldn't log into their wow accounts oh from back in the day so yeah i guess they do nice. yeah like Am imagine yeah, if you was, were uh, um if you're br if like your brother was botting or something and you're playing on the same computer, you're like, sure, bro, get off the computer. You're like, I want to play. And you go on and like, yeah. you have all these like, oh, eight bugged stuff. And you're like, where's my account? You know, <laughs> and the, oh, your brother sure gets your happened. stuff banned. I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure that happened, man. Like there's, there's <laughs> got to be. There's got to be instances where that happened. You know how many F's Blizzard gave when people called up with that excuse? <laughs> Absolutely not. I got to do it the other hand over here. <laughs> Absolutely. You shall pay for the sins of your brother. Right, right. <laughs> you can figure this out in family court. Right, yeah. A few, uh, nothing a few punches can't fix, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> get, you, get your little bro straight, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's crazy though. That's crazy. No, that's um I, I'm actually I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with you know what I've seen so far in like D2R and how they how they're responding to all of that stuff. Cause I mean they're very aware of how people feel about that stuff and, you know, the uh, the implications it can have on the game. But I'm actually I'm, I'm pretty impressed so far with how they're handling it. Like, 
yeah you know, it's it's rather commendable i'm pretty happy with most of the, most of the stuff on diablo 2 resurrected obviously there was all the server issues at the beginning and uh i don't really know what to think about it necessarily i, I haven't been involved with too many like online multiplayer game launches so i, I don't know if uh, Everybody says that Blizzard is notoriously terrible for it, and I remember the Diablo 3 launch where the game came out and you literally could not play it for a full week. I don't know if you were ever involved in that. I hope not, and you probably don't want to touch Diablo 3, but uh, I, I thought it was going to be good. I tried it. The, for a, literally a full week, there was no single player. You had to be online to even play single player, so it was a complete disaster. But now that... Uh, the I guess the player base is probably toned down a little bit in Diablo 2 Resurrected. I haven't really had any problems with servers. I haven't had any... I don't even have a queue anymore. I'm sure that's how it is for everybody. Uh, I usually play a lot in the morning. I don't know about other people playing in the afternoon and stuff like that. But all in all, with Diablo 2 Resurrected, I've been pretty, pretty happy with it. What What are your thoughts kind of on it? On it? Oh, I used to get queued up all the time. Um, you know, it's it's been a lot better lately, though. Yeah, the last it used couple to be weeks. like uh, when when they when they first introduced that queue and they were like, oh yeah, we're gonna you know we're gonna add this queue. It, it didn't. I mean, there was certain people that felt some type of way about it, but like you almost had to. It was like it was like uh, it's like eating a baked potato, right? You might not be hungry right now, but you might as well put a baked potato in the oven in case you're hungry later. That was like what queuing up was in the morning for Diablo 2 Resurrected. It was like, I don't really want to play right now, but <laughs> in two hours, I in, might. The, in, the, in the two hours it takes me to get into the game you know, or on to battle on that, maybe I will in a couple of hours. So it was like, yeah, whatever, like wake up, like scratch your ass, hit log in. And it's like, mm. all right, your position in queue is 612. You're like, great. I got some time for coffee, morning exercise, all this stuff. You know, it's yes. like, see, I would actually just... kind of do almost the opposite of that. Not the opposite, but like I actually play usually early in the morning. Like if I'm not playing and I'm streaming, I, I'll get on at like six or six thirty or seven o'clock in the morning usually. Cause I get up. Wife's not up. Kids aren't up. You know, I get up, what's, uh, roll down to the basement, start clicking some buttons. You know, I would usually, um, before I'd go to bed, I would go down to my computer and open Diablo two resurrected. And then I would go to bed, you know, and I'd wake up in the morning and yeah. like half the time I'd be like, Oh no, it, it crashed or I got kicked or something. And or I'd come down yeah. and I'd shake the mouse and the screen would wake up and I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Yep. <laughs> We're still there. We're still there. Now, I used to do that in LOD, believe it or not. Like I would, uh, I mean, it, the, the D2R is a lot more taxing on your computer. So I don't really, I, I don't really do it now, but like I used to leave uh, D2 LOD games up all night, like, like leave a character in a hell game and OG battle net players might know why I did that. And it's just because in the random chance that D clone spawns and they pop that server overnight, you just have a hell game up like you know, I used to do it all the time, like especially, you know, uh, like early college years. Like, that would be like my nightlight was D2 running like, you know, what I mean, it's like, <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, the D clones a thing. So why not? It was a couple of times you wake up and it's like Diablo walks the earth. You're like, shit, man, I got an Annie while I was sleeping, <laughs> you know, but at other times your game crashes or something. Like, right. You had to do something specific back then, though, man. You had to like lock your character up in like a walking animation that shook the screen. It was so weird. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, no, I, I never did that. No, the, the only time I ever left it open to get an Annie was like single player pluggy when it, it just had the counter. And I was like, man, I like I finally have the right character to actually kill. You know, I can't do it on my budget sorceress that I had, but I got this budget paladin, you know, yep. so I just leave it overnight, wake up in the morning like, oh, D clone spawn. No, OK. Yep. Yep. That's exactly how it was, man. Like that's uh, that was that was all of you know my early college career in uh overnight it was i i was a loser in college apparently just having multiple d2 clients up hunting d clone while i slept you know <laughs> wake up go to class like sometimes you'd have this is like the demoralizing part too is right sometimes you'd have the soj messages and you're like well they're doing something right gotta yeah, leave yeah. it up like i i could be writing this report right now but D clone could also spawn, and you got to prioritize things in life. Yeah, you know? I mean, what got you far? I, what I got you farther? Long. Like, <laughs> yep, exactly, man. That was fun. Have you uh, have you uh, had the pleasure of fighting D clone on D two R yet? 
Um, I have not. I haven't. I haven't even done. Uh, actually, I haven't even farmed torches yet or anything on uh, Diablo Two Resurrected. To be honest, like uh, even though, um, and I don't know if you picked this up from our brief conversation before things I posted before. I had quit my job, so uh, I'm kind of doing this like part time content creator, part time like stay at home dad. Pretty wicked, nice. I'll be honest. But uh, nice, man. between making videos and, and then doing the gameplay and stuff and editing and, and all that stuff, making videos, picking kids up from school, taking you know daughter to dance class and blah, blah, blah. I haven't really had time to do as much playing as a lot of people probably think I, I would being a Diablo 2 creator or whatever. But, I mean, the struggle's real. You know, the life, living the life of a stay-at-home dad is a real life. I scrubbed that bathtub yeah. today and the walls and the shower. <laughs> like after I did the video today. <laughs> and then bust, I, I bust actually did that magic eraser, you know, I did two, uh, two videos on the second channel. And then I did one video on the main channel, scrubbed the shower, dropped the daughter off at school, picked her up, you know, like it's a busy life. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, man. But, Congrats uh, on balance and all that. That's tough. Man. Well, the uh, that's really it's it's actually it's pretty tough to balance all the that. The second channel, I'll just plug real quick. No big deal, everybody. But uh, so I just they're just super quick, like one minute, two minute videos on like video editing for DaVinci Resolve, the video editor I use. So just like boom, nice. here's how you do this. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Like no fluff, no nothing like that. You know, just straight to the point type stuff. Yep. Shirley Sirius says, "Cooley, where is your second channel?" <laughs> God damn it, I barely got enough time for one. Yeah. Well, I have <laughs> I have 51 subscribers, so let's go, baby. Ooh. Nice. Nice. <laughs> it's just kind of a side Good. thing. Like, uh, originally, I was posting, like, NBA Top Shot pack openings. And, like, uh, what else did I put? I don't know. Just a couple other goofy videos or whatever. But, see, I used to, uh, not so much anymore. I canceled my cable. You know, I was a cord cutter. But I, I used to be, like, huge into basketball. It was almost a thing to where... I was only into basketball because everybody I knew didn't like basketball. So it was kind of like, oh, yeah, the Pistons are my team. Different. Let's go. And you got to see, check, check this out, this one over here, the back-to-back champs. Can I get oh, shit. with an 89.90? Another uh, Salvation oh, Army shit. find right there. Let's go. That's, that's where it's at, man. I actually, got, it's at. I actually got two of these. I, went, I bought one like 10 years ago, and then like three or four years after I bought it, I went to another Salvation Army. Found the same shirt again, and I was like, "Well, if anything happens to the other one, I got a backup. Let's go, let's go." <laughs> right, and plus, you don't want, you want to you want to scoop it up so that nobody else is wearing the same damn shirt. Like, oh right, you, know, you can't be having none of that. I, I mean, no. Now that you mention it, I used to I used to uh, jam on another channel with a buddy of mine. We used to do uh, we used to talk about um, Magic the Gathering cards. Right, uh, right, yep. That's a big, that's a big hobby of mine too. There, I mean, there's, it's not just a card game anymore. Like, there's fucking Magic Arena that you, you know, people play, and like there was Magic Online and stuff. But we used to, we used to jam about that. There's like a, that's an interesting hobby too because it's like it's got quite the following, and some of those cards from like back in the day are worth ridiculous amounts of money now mm -hmm. like ridiculous yeah that was something i mean i had a small group of friends and i wasn't i wasn't into it like you are i remember i actually what you know you probably remember me jumping in there real quick once in a while like uh, you oh, know yeah. watching you guys and i wasn't into it and not not as not knowledge is not there at all but we uh you know we had a phase in high school where we thought it would be hilarious every week we would pick some thing from like five or ten years ago that we would then bring to school like one week we're like we're all we're all oh we went out and bought like 50 dollar yo-yos that would like have these sick bearings in them and we'd just be like fuck walking down the the hallway with our yo-yos yeah. the next week and we're I like love yo-yos man i could do all the tricks and shit <laughs> like the yeah. oh man we're, i used to love that we're like juniors so cool. in high school the next week we're bringing in pogs then we're bringing it we're all we're hacky sacking for just out of nowhere you know just like whatever random thing they used to do like in the 90s or 2000s so like we'd bring in another thing we started playing magic the gathering then all of a sudden people seen us playing it at lunch and they were like well i got all these cards i'll bring them in and all of a sudden there was like 50 kids in the high school playing magic the gathering and all and albeit my high school was like 300 kids like so that's like a big percentage i'm not like <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we ended up like going to magic shops and like buying cards and like actually building decks and stuff and like actually like not crazy getting into it but like actually like through joking around about it we actually got into it and enjoyed it a whole bunch 
Yeah, that is sick, man. It is a fun game. Like I said, I mean, I, I think a, a crucial component to a lot of games, in my opinion, for the survivability of them is basically having value in your game pieces, right? Like, you know, having having eternal value in your game pieces. And when, you know, people are buying magic cards for like, you know, oh, I, I want this special card for my deck, but it's like 50 bucks. You know what I mean? There's a certain like when you when you compare it to like Pokemon or something, you know, in the trading card game for that, where they overprinted the shit out of like all of the cards and they never were worth anything like sure it's still around but like the hype is real for magic and i think that has a lot to do with it is like it's just cards of held value and like people that used to play it at one point they're just like oh man i, f I found all of these magic cards i'm gonna take them to a shop and sell them and it's like you're giving me how much for these damn things right like you know it's just it's just insane yeah, I don't I don't have a ton like that, but that was how I got a lot of them cuz I was the only one out of like my group that didn't have like the magic cards or whatever. So but there was some guy who seen us playing and he was like, "I don't want this crap. I'll sell I'll sell you all these cards for like 40 bucks." And I don't know if you ever seen those white card boxes that are like this big oh, yeah. and they probably fit like oh, yeah. 4 or 500 cards in them. I bought 5 of those from him for for 40 bucks and just I mean, most of them were commons, but then there was all the the rares or uh, I forget what the, the silver and gold ones um, from the oh, yeah. like commons, a, uncommon edition rares, seven mythics. and earlys earlier stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was it was all like uh, yeah. I think the the seventh edition was like the newest at the time, and then then they were Damn. older than that. But it didn't have the, the only Been thing is all it, them boxes. It didn't have any of those like. Uh, black lotuses, the original ones, or like the original fireballs that were like one fire, just like three damage. It didn't have any of those, like those ones that are worth like a ton of money. You know, you know which ones oh, I'm yeah. talking about. Oh yeah, there's still there's still a ton of them, like the dual lands and stuff like that. My buddy went to a, a lawn sale at one point and like it basically did the same thing you did, like picked up a a couple boxes of like old magic cards for like 40 bucks uh i think it was actually the same price i don't know what it is with people not knowing the value of their magic cards and charging 40 bucks Everyone they know they're worth it. something but he like he like shows me like sent me a picture of what he got and there's like like 10 or 12 dual lands in there which were like 500 dollars each and like you know uh there's there's a certain thing that they did mm. called the reserve list where they put a list of cards out there that they would never reprint and like those are on it you know what I mean? So obviously the value of those is just going up over time. Um, wow. I should probably yeah. look into and my boxes because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have some dual, the, like the ones that are two, two mana, right? Like the two different kinds. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The, the dual lands. Yeah. They have like the little squares on the, uh, on the uh, text box and mm. stuff. And it's like, you know, you got tundras, you got your underground seeds. I'm going to have to dig your, those yeah, out and get stuff. rich real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, it's a good retirement plan. Be like, I played this game back in the day, and holy right. shit, this is a two thousand dollar card now. Right. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. Yeah, that's what. It's uh, good to have. Uh, you know, it's good to have hobbies. Right. Yeah, and you save all that stuff from back in the day. I, I, I know. I mentioned this to you when we were chatting real quick, but the uh, like some of the old sports cards, you know, I used to have, or or I do have. I mean, that I pulled out and looked at them the other day, and like. Kobe Bryant rookie that I have from back in the day probably has some value. I haven't looked it up lately, but, and I got some like some cards from back in the day that were worth like 40 or 50 bucks at the time. I would have to imagine they'd be worth more now. Right. Oh man. I don't imagine like I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure on like sports cards. Cause in my experience, they've always been like hit or miss. You know what I mean? Oh, you yeah, have, yeah. Like, I mean, you, you have something where you're like, oh, this is really cool. And then like, you know, you, you look it up online or something like that. And there's like a bazillion copies and it's not worth anything. You know what I mean? Like I've I've run into that a lot. Like I, I just never understood it enough. Like, you know, with with a game like Magic, it's kind of easy. You can look at a card and be like, wow, this is really good in the game. You know what I mean? This must be a good card or must have a lot of value yeah. with sports cards. It's like you have to recognize the name of the person. And then even if you do, like it has to be some specific version. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's like, kind of like so with, hard to like price it out with magic. There's a uh, an actual demand for it. It's not like an artificial demand based upon who knows, you know, like how good the player is or pretty much the demand for sports cards is what people think they're going to be worth in the future. 
So if people think they're going to be worth more, then they demand, then there's a higher demand for it, which causes the value. Like, it's not like you were saying for Magic how these cards are sick as fuck. So they're going to have a bunch of value, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, there's just so much that goes on. I, at some point, I had to, like, draw a line with all my nerdy habits. I'm like, my brain, my small brain can only comprehend so much in this life. And, uh between d2 magic that's probably like one of the reasons you remember when wow came out back in the day like a whole bunch of my you know, friends were like oh you should play this you should get into this i looked at that game i'm like this looks sick but i was like you know what i'm probably gonna die of all of my nerdy habits someday and it was like i can't i can't quite <laughs> i'm gonna this is gonna suck up my life i was like i'm purposely choosing now at this point not to get into it because I'm like, I mean, at that point, I was playing so much D2. I was just like, I can't fucking fit another thing. And like, uh, I'm like, this is, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to rot away. Yeah. I remember when WoW came out and, uh, and it was a scan of the same thing. I, I was playing D2 at the time and WoW came out. And I don't remember how much it was or whatever, but it, there was like a monthly fee. And I was like, why would I pay per month to play WoW when you could play Diablo 2 for free forever? Yep. Forever. Yep. <laughs> yep. I would I, I don't yeah I don't think I would ever pay a monthly fee to play a game and that's gonna blow people's minds in the chats on both of our chats I'm sure but I couldn't like I would rather play I would rather buy Elder Scrolls games I would rather plug in Morrowind and play that again than pay fifteen ninety nine a month to play some video yeah. game after you just paid forty bucks to to play, to buy it you know like and haven't they came yeah, out with like I, I five different expansions for WoW too that probably you had to pay for probably. or someone did. Yeah, probably. I think I think they have been trying to like the, the the journey to monetizing video games has changed so much over time. You know what I mean? And I, th I think that was like one of the one of the first ways that really broke some ground was monthly subscriptions to WoW. Mm -hmm. That like was it was a way for them to generate constant revenue from a game instead of people paying like six, you know, 40 to 60 bucks for the game. And then that's it. Yeah, that's the, like the company's the on the hook to collect. support it forever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, then you look at games like D2, right? Like D2 LOD. You paid you paid your 20 bucks and you got the game? Great. All right. Now enjoy this server for the next 25 years. If you told me you'd pay me 20 bucks to do something that I'd have to service it for 20 years, I'd be like, "Hey, you fuck right off." Like that's definitely not worth my time. I don't care. I mean, it's yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> Granted, I know they made more than $20 from that whole thing, but it's still it's like Yeah, you know, I paid 40 bucks for my battle chest, all right? So That's right. That's right. You get the D1, uh, D2, and D2 LOD experience. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> and I, act I actually still I got to, uh, is it. Do I still got it up here, actually? Where is it at? I'm pulling back, pulling back this, the... Don't the look, Wizard of Oscar. Don't look, don't look guys. Don't look, guys. I, st I got my original. Got my original right up here. <laughs> from nice. from the battle Comfy, chest. Cover it up. Couple of, Covering up that CD key. Yeah, don't want no one jacking that CD key. Botting with that thing. That, getting you banned from D2R just for a <laughs> podcast. That would suck. That's exactly what I was doing. Yeah, but and I kind of wish I don't know when I'm when I bought the house that I'm living in now, like five years ago. I was like looking through all my stuff, like and my my wife would tell you if you ever talk to her, don't ever talk to her. But uh, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just kidding. But I love throwing things away. All right. I don't like clutter. I don't like things laying around. But anyways, so I had my original battle chest. I It was like smushed and crushed. I threw away the box and I was looking at the strategy guide and it is so comical. It's like, it's like, don't use blessed hammers because the, uh, you have to be really close to the monster to use them. You know, <laughs> then this is the, the strategy guide from like 2002 or whatever. And I was like, wow. ah, and I threw it away because I was like, I don't, where, where am I going to put this? Like I'm running out of room. I kind of wish I would have kept it oh, all now, but of advice, I don't blame you. You know, that's uh, <laughs> with that kind of advice. Might as well chuck that right in the trash. Yeah, there was all kinds of wacky advice, you know, like, uh, you know, the sorceress, you want to put a bunch of points into mana, you know, because you need it. And I was like, oh boy, like, I mean, I guess certain instances, yeah, I guess that's, but that's, yeah, that still has some merit, but I mean, probably not in the ways that they were anticipating. You know I mean? Right? Yeah, I'm a not... I'm a very strict uh, all points into vitality type of guy. You know, obviously being unless you're doing like the energy shield, you know, but reduced magic damage reduced and all that good stuff. But yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of value too in like in Diablo of going max block. I think it's very underrated. Um, like. 
it was one of those things that I used to be like full vite too. You know what I mean? Like just full full vita and a lot. And it's still the right thing to do with some builds too. Like you know, even in PvP, like if you're good with a certain build, it's like still good to go full vita. Like I'm not sure if you've ever. I'm not, I'm not sure if you've you've ventured into the dueling land of like dueling necros or or druids or whatnot. But sometimes they can get away with going full vita just because of their dueling style. Like you know what I mean? But every time I played with like a uh, as a sorceress or you know even a, a paladin or really any character of mine, I've always been like I'm gonna get cracked by a fucking paladin and I'm going to block. I am not going to just get stun locked this entire time. I think, but you know, even if it's not PvP, like PvM, I think it has it's very underrated too. Like. You know, especially with characters where you're like you, you're telly stomping um, like a pack of monsters. If you're going through and you're like, you know, doing the grind to to ninety nine, let's say like you're you're probably going through and head hunting in chaos. You know what I mean? Like you're killing the boss packs, you're you, you know, and with builds like a hammered in or even a poison necro, like, you know, you, you have to kind of get obnoxiously close sometimes to monsters. And in a very crowded place like chaos, I think it's it's underrated, you know, to to have um, max block in those instances, because that's where you're going to get cracked. Like the the spells in chaos are like, you know, they'll do some damage to you. The Venom Lords can like burn you down with fire and stuff. But like equally as important as that 75 resist is 75 percent block because you know i'm not sure if you've ever tried to telly stomp desace with like a uh hammered in or whatnot but even if you have max block that shit can hurt i've done sometimes. it and like, i and i've died instantly from it yeah yeah <clears throat> the only time i yeah, i ever like, do max block usually is with the hammered in or with a paladin yeah so um but yeah i don't i don't dabble in pvp I, i'm not man enough to be handling stuff like that but uh, I, I don't know why well, even even with a the firewall sorceress uh, build that I had, or, you know, early on in the or early on in D2R, I went max block because, like many other people, I realized how insanely powerful firewall was, like you know, right out the gate. And one of the things that you have to be careful with, or you have to monitor a bit with firewall, is like you have to you have to make sure that your target doesn't move much, right? So like when you're when you're going up against bosses, which is what firewall is insane for killing, like they love to move around like Mephisto. He, I mean, you might notice it when you're trying to moat trick him and stuff like that. Like he moves around a lot like, you know, he'll he's always moving. But what stops these bosses from moving is when you telly stomp them and you get like really close and they're like, oh, OK, he's right here. Let's let's hit him. Well, a max block build is great for that. Like so I was I was rocking a max block sorceress. You know, just because that was the strategy, like, you know what I mean? I'm going to stomp this boss and be obnoxiously close and like I'm going to block 75 percent of the things that he throws my way. It's like, you know, uh, it, it's I think there's there's a lot of game theory you could do with that, too, you know, uh, yeah. because although you get a lot of a lot more life dumping everything into vitality, it's like, OK, but by dumping more into dexterity, how many hits do you just never take that you would have otherwise taken? Right. Yeah. You know I mean? And with, so it's uh, like, especially with sorceress, point, it's like, know? uh, what for every one point into vitality, you only get two points of life though, the way that works. And obviously with other yeah. characters, you get more Base life, life yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. um, yeah, if you don't have a CTA yet, especially, you know, to boost it up more, it would be, I could see how you could, uh, read that as being more beneficial to go max block instead of max vitality especially if you're doing that. Usually I handle where uh, if you're going after Mephisto or Andaria with, with a sorceress, I'll telestomp just so my mercenary will eat the blows and I'll back up and then cast away, you know. That's how I yeah. tell stomp, run away in fear, and then cast, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, no, exactly. Like, I mean, there's, there's also, it, it, it depends on how much, um, like max block can also depend on how much you want to uh, you know, I joke around with some people is how much you want to sip beers and MF too. you know what I mean? Like how simple do you want the MFing to be? Some people like to min max and they like to do areas as fast as possible. And they're just like, they're just like, I want my face glued to the computer screen, hovering over my mouse and keyboard. And like, I'm not doing anything else besides jamming these runs as fast as I can. Me, I'm just like, if I can't sit there and make jokes and like, you know, make fun of my friends while I'm, you know, jamming and sipping beers without having to worry about my character dying, mm -hmm. then like, I probably don't want to play that build. 
So like, you know, that's why often as well, like when I'm um, MFing with like a wind druid or whatnot, um, I say this, but my current wind druid does not follow this rule. But uh, oftentimes what I would do is uh, just put max block on that guy too, because I'm, you're, you're doing the same thing as a hammered in. You're stomping your targets. You know what I mean? The, the reason I didn't do it in D2R is because the monster AI seems to work differently. In LOD, Monsters in the Chaos Sanctuary had like a sixth sense as to what to hit in a pack. Like you could you could stomp with your mercenary, your oak and five wolves and somehow every single fucking deceased spawn would smack you and not your wolves, <laughs> not your pets. Like they would smack you. You know what I mean? That's the target they would choose. Uh -huh. Like, so I, I kind of needed to rock max block back then when I was like, you know, PVMing with a, with a wind It doesn't seem to be the same in D2R. Like they, they'll pick the closest target or they'll, you know, um, in, in PVP, it sort of works the same way. Like with your pets, it's, uh, you know, you, you can get away with not having max block on a druid because your pets will actually, they basically block for you. So for example, if you have like five pets up, right? And you you telly stomp a hammered in who's throwing actively spinning hammers. You would think that that's a bad idea because you're just going to immediately land on a hammer. But what most people don't know is that your pets will actually eat that hammer first. And like so the pet will hit the hammer will hit the pet and then the hammer's dead. Like whenever it hits a target, it's dead. So even though it's like spinning around, it can't do any damage. So like. It'll hit your pets first and you're fine. Like you throw a NATO and you get out of there and you probably took no damage from it. Um, and it seems to be like that it works much like that in D2R, like, you know, even in PVM, like they'll choose your pets like a lot of times to hit rather than just you. But like I said, it was different for me in LOD because it always seemed like they had a sixth sense of like, yeah, let's absolutely obliterate the player and and not as pets and not as mercenary. Like we we know what's up. And so, hmm. yeah, it that, was that might have been because I I did I haven't done a lot of like you said the like the pets wise whether summons or for a druid or a necromancer or whatever. I never really did that a lot, but yeah, Desace, man, Desace drops everybody all the time. The amount of shit that got talked to me about getting dropped by Desace when I was hammered in around in the Chaos Sanctuary, like, you would think that I just, like, punched somebody's three-year-old in the face because <laughs> because I died to DeSace, like, a bunch of times. Like, I mean, that's completely normal, right? Like, you're, you're streaming, you're, like, watching this, you're trying to read chat, you telly-stomp, you're spinning some hammers, you're trying to read a question real quick, dead instantly, you know? Like, when they got the wrong... When, they got, when DeSace has the wrong auras and you weren't paying attention wow like towards the end of those runs because i did i can't remember what i did for those ones but i i ended up not i just wouldn't telly stomp his group i would i would teleport r like roughly like you know the hammers would spin out and then they spin around again and that's where the, you know yep. i would telly stop i would teleport that far away and i would spin up and let them walk into them um, just i mean it takes more time but I was just sick of getting yeah. dropped and I mean, I, I get it. The Hamburden is like mega powerful, obviously, but if you get the wrong auras, it, like I have like a maxed out palette, like a 95 paladin that's max block and you know, a perfect or a, well, a six bow CTA, not a perfect one. And you're still getting dropped in one hit. What else do you want me to do, bro? You know, like there's yeah. only so much you can do on the game. I'm telling you, man, the uh, like I used to back before I was like real heavy into PVP and like learning a lot more about it. I used to build I used to build uh, characters that were harder and not smarter. You know what I mean? Like it, it was it was like I would just build them to try to be tanks and stuff like oh, I I've got this fade now. You can't you can't take me on like you're not going to one shot me now because I've pre buffed with fade and all of this shit. But like I swear there's a certain there's a certain skill set you develop doing PVP that just like makes you like completely disrespect the PVM AI. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, for example, now from all the times I have of dueling my friends on discord and the people that I've met along the way, I was, I just have this, like, it's like a second nature. You always want to make them think you're doing something else. 
and then surprise him with something. So like that's how I go up, up against Desace now with the hammered in. I'll sit there and like you spawn Desace, and then I'll sit there like so Desace is like you know up here with his with his his pack right, and then I'll teleport down here and I'll keep teleporting down here, just like keep teleporting in the same area, and all of his dudes will come over. And the second that they give me just enough space, I stomp to Sace and like without that fanaticism aura, all of his minions are just neutered. Like mm -hmm. they they don't do anything. So like one or two hammers to Sace is down. He doesn't have his minions to stop my hammers. Like and then it it, it takes like an extra second and a half. But again, like I don't really jam through for like, you know, let's do them as fast as I can. I'm like. Let's take a second and a half and not get slapped by this ace. Like, you know what I mean? And then that's that's it. At that point, like after the aura is down, the minions are just nothing. Like they don't do anything to you. So Yeah, right. I'm and, like, yep, come on over. I'm just gonna disrespectfully battle you cast battle orders while you guys are around me. No problem. You ain't got your fanaticism aura now. I'm fine. <laughs> on to the next headhunt. Like Yeah, and a lot yeah, of I times think, not but not I taking think, like, that death that. when you're like like magic finding or whatever. Even though you're spending an extra second or two or like doing like how you said, just teleport in the same spot to lure them over. Or like I said, just spinning up like back a little further and taking some of them out. And then you'll actually save yourself time not wasting half of a run, another load time, uh, you know, and all that stuff. Um, if you if you really sometimes if you really try to go too fast, especially um, with the way that I am doing things on stream and stuff, because I don't know, maybe it's just the, the high school I went to. But when you're trying to read chat and play the game, you know, you the know, high school I went to, yeah, that's, that's, that's they a, not teach you to read. That's that's just that's just a joke. That's just a joke. But you're trying to read. You're trying to do the chat. You're just teleporting. Wink, 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 wink. Th randomly through the chaos sanctuary or something and yeah you know I, I was doing a lot i was doing my magic find barb the other day just tele teleporting as fast as you can like kind of half looking to see if there's a champion over there and then you just tell he's in the wrong spot not paying attention boom dropped you know it, it happens it oh, yeah. happens there's there's a different it's it's a whole different thing man to be to be completely honest i know how you feel like when you're reading when you have like multiple things like when you're reading chat i've i mean i do this all the time and i feel like an absolute dumbass i mean it is because i'm actually yep. an absolute <laughs> dumbass but uh, I, I like, that read, it's like <laughs> <laughs> that's right man but like so i'm going through and i'll like you know this is i'm the worst multitasker ever so i'll like try to read someone's comment and i'll like half read it and then I'll try to respond to what I half fucking read. And then I'm like, all right, let's get it. And then it like it's it ends up not at all being what the person said. Like, oh, you know yeah. What I mean? so, oh, yeah. You know, I'll read yep. like, oh, it's diadems. Yeah, yeah, man. The best diadems. <laughs> Griffins. So good. My check like, can vouch for that like, one. Dude, you missed a fucking diadem. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you missed a unique diadem like two games ago, you dumbass. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I meant to do that. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, know what just... we probably need is if actually if you get a helm with percent faster brain rate, that'll actually help us out uh, with. <laughs> I can't claim I can't claim credit for that. Uh, man, man, show from my chat uh, said that one. <laughs> percent That's faster good. brain That's rate. Good. That's exactly what we need. The uh, uh, more brain cells, thirty percent more brain cell regeneration per minute. That's <laughs> that's what we need. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, probably would have yeah, helped us uh, more whiskey, probably, huh? Yeah, that's always. <laughs> did you know that? Uh, did you know that in archery competitions, whiskey or any alcohol was considered a performance enhancing drug? Well, I guess down to a point, like it would just ease your tensions, right? So you'd be smoother. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly what it was. Like that was exactly what it was. It was. Um, like it it calmed your nerves and like if your nerves were like shaky and stuff like and you were you were like trying to aim it, you would it, you know if you were nervous or something boom like just kiss that shot goodbye i wonder how much it actually pays off in like gaming i I've, I've always wondered that because some of the things that people do like especially in very competitive games like you see all those like esports events where people are like on stage with computers and shit playing each other I often wonder, like, is alcohol a performance enhancing drug there as well? Like, because that's got to be nerve wracking. Hmm. You know what I mean? If you think about it, like people going from like playing in their fucking basement to like playing on a stage in front of thousands of people and like still having to not have like shaky hands with the fine motor skills that you need for a mouse 
and like you know knowing where your keys are there's there's a name for a sense of that like your body has a sense of where your limbs are and like without seeing them uh, yeah like, like spatial perception all that stuff is very nervous system yeah like the the nervous system is like responsible for all of that and i'm just like <laughs> look man i'm gonna use that to justify you know um just sipping away on certain things on the stream when I'm when I'm dueling against the the best in the world, you know, we'll just call it that. See, just performance the, the only things I can compare that to would be like I can remember like putting back beers and like playing Call of Duty back in the day, you know, uh, not the same as being on stage in an arena or anything. Or maybe a little more uh, a contemporary example would be like I don't know if you're a golfer or anything. I I golf in the summer. I tried to golf. Uh, not as often as I would like, but you know, there's always that, that place where you, you know, you have a beer, you have two beers, you have three beers and you start golfing real good, you know, then all of a sudden you get to a point where, who boy, your golfing goes downhill in a hurry, in a hurry. All of a sudden My you're boy, was just off in that. the woods. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It, it, Max was just saying that on this end. He's just like, yeah, my brother used to do that stuff. His game would get real good, and then it would go the other way real quick. That's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah around hole five or six, like you peak. start getting good. You know, you drink a beer on the first hole, then your boys want a shotgun one, and then you're like feeling great, and then then all of a sudden, really, you hit you hit the turn, you do a shot, ball. and then it's off, it's off off the rails, off the rails. See, I thought I thought that was playing golf is, you know, it's really about the drinking and chilling with the friends and whatever you hit, you hit. Uh, you know, that's that's what I thought golf was. You just smack a ball while drinking beers. Oh, for sure. Know? Yeah. But then you have to, like, talk crap to each other, too, you know, like make fun of each other. Like, like. Your friend slices one into the woods, you talk crap to him, even though the last hole you just sliced yours into the woods. Like, you know. <laughs> you gotta pretend you didn't do it. You just gotta act as if. They're not they gonna remember they're, they're drunk. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's like dueling when you beat somebody. <laughs> it's like dueling in D2. You guys, it's, it's no feeling. Like when someone whoops your ass for hours in a row, you get one kill on them. And you're like, wow, man, that's... Uh, you're terrible. AFK six hours. It's, right. Uh, you know, it's, it's, so you can go home happy. As, as long as you birdie 18, it doesn't matter how many triple bogeys you got. Triple bogey on 7, 11, 13, 14, 15. You birdie 18, you're golden for the rest of the day. It's science. It's science. It is exactly science. Speaking of science, dude, we uh, I was streaming this morning and like, Dude, more on this as it develops. I don't want to like. I I want to get people hyped about this more than anything. But more on I'm this as already. it develops. Oh boy, dude. I don't uh, know where you could I, be going I don't with this. Say too, I, I don't want to say too much about it because like it's. <laughs> I don't want to go into the fine details, because it's kind of ridiculous, but it's super simple to do, and I feel like when when we figure out exactly how it works. I'm going to let people know, okay. but we did all of this stuff. We did all of this stuff for science today and we're still learning stuff about it. Cause it's not consistent. Is this like D2R like, stuff you're talking about? Yeah. D2R stuff, man. So we were like, I had this, I had this, uh, uh, I, I tell you a little bit about it. Like I had this, this superstition that I, that I developed, right? Because my, my rune word rolling luck in D2R has been outrageously good. Okay. Like outrageously good for the most part. I've like botched a couple of rune word rolls, but never really paid attention to like similarities when I was doing them. You know what I mean? Like when I was rolling, like for, for example, I got gifted a jaw rune for my birthday uh, a couple weeks ago. And I was like, oh, sweet, man. And like immediately right away, I was like, well, I, now I can make this enigma and start teleporting around on Battle.net. I roll my enigma. Boom. Perfect enigma. I was like, what? What a icing on the cake. Complete pun intended for the birthday. I was like, that's, hmm. I was like, no way. Well, like, you know, sure as shit. I was like, well, that was cool. I had already rolled a perfect Hodo like a couple weeks back. And like, you know, so I said I had this superstitious thing that I was doing. And I was like, you know, okay. So somebody asked me on stream the other day. They're like, hey, I just got the runes for an enigma. Would you roll it for me? 
And, uh, you know, granted, I thought my luck had been running out because I, you know, I didn't do my superstitious thing a couple of times. And I, I think I know like where you're going with this. One CTA. And like, so I was like, all right, man, yeah, I'll do it. And I'll do my superstitious thing. We'll give you the, you know, give me the runes. We'll do it. So I did my superstitious thing. I joined the game. He gives me the stuff. And then like, boom, perfect enigma again. I was like, you're shitting me. I was like twice in a row, perfect 775 enigma. I was like, wow, well, enjoy that. You know, I made some jokes in my Discord. I was like, now rolling perfect rune words for, you know, a fee. Right, yeah. Uh, just just let me know. Full money back guarantee. I've got nothing to lose. I was like, I'm just joking around. I was going to say, yeah, if you knock but, this out, I'm, I'm sensing like a, a quarter million view video, like easy peasy right here. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. So, like, I had passively mentioned it when I started streaming hey, don't, this Don't morning. mention too much because like, yeah, you'll ruin your future video here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I was like, I was like, I had passively mentioned it, and and people were like, oh, you should try it. And I was like, oh, I don't know, man. I'm jamming some chaos runs, and I was like, ah, no, fuck it. Let's roll some rune words. So like, you know, had people join it in on Discord and like talking about it and stuff. And I was like, yeah, this is what I do. Like, you know, blah blah blah. This is my superstition. And then I was like, oh, let's just test it out with an insight. Boom, like perfect seventeen med, like one percent off from perfect enhanced damage. I was like. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, I was like, th there might be something to this. And uh, I shit you not. We had a few people join up on the Discord. And like, we put this theory to the test. This morning, we rolled four plus six CTAs, eight 35% spirits. So many other rune words that were just ridiculous. But the thing is, there was a couple in there where we like followed the procedure and we followed the superstition. There was like a couple of rolls that hmm. were like anti-perfect, that were just like absolute terrible. And I was like, okay, so I can't really say anything about it if like it, sometimes it does this. You know what I mean? It was super weird, but I was like losing my shit this morning. I was like, no friggin' way. My buddy was like, my buddy was like rolling, you know, he, he was like, all right, man, I'm going to try it with this spirit. Boom, 35%. He's like, no friggin' way, dude. And like, so we tried it again. He's like, yeah, let's just do it with another one. Boom, 35%. Next one, 35%. I was like, oh my God, man. Like, there's some merit to this. Hmm. But uh, so I was happy because I was like, wow, man, this could be pretty insane. But, That's pretty uh, wild. you know, at the same time, I was I was like, well, I thought I, ha I, thought I was a lucky person and now I'm just... Now I'm just average again. <laughs> it was huh. crazy, man. But yeah, more on this as it develops. More testing is needed for scientific purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I won't press you too much on that because that, that that sounds like a sick scoop. I will. Uh, yeah, I will say this when when I made my spirit spirit sword anti perfect roll. So there, th that's pretty much science right there. Don't give it the sweet fill. Like everybody in my chat, they're saying they're they're coming to you. You're about to get blown up in your Discord about rolling oh, rune man. words for everybody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a small fee, you know. That's all I charge. Just small right. fee. Just you two, got, two uh, jaw I'm runes. Really good he'll, with enigmas. He'll, he'll yeah, he'll roll an enigma for you. Give him two jaw runes and the jaw and the burr and the armor, and he'll make yeah. your enigma for you complete refund if it doesn't work you know i'll give you back all the premium you'll still keep the you know non-perfect roll it's fine you know no you don't owe me nothing i'll give it all back you know just small small <laughs> just give me what you think you know just a little tip just a little tip here now nice nice yeah it's crazy man i can't wait to test it out more it's like it's one of those things i'm like no friggin' way i was like losing my shit this morning yeah that's pretty cool it'd be, be a clip I, of I, it up i've on heard my, on my um, facebook clips and i and i know it's probably some sort of uh what am I trying to say? Like you noticed the uh, pattern or whatever that that you had gotten. That I had seen um, Macro. He said he had found a pattern. He he had posted a video about a pattern to gambling circlets, to where really um yeah if it was it was something about the graphic in the circlet like you know how if you gamble like a a coronet or whatever it could be a circlet yep. it could be a diadem. But if it was a cornet and then you were above a certain level or something like that, it was it was never actually a cornet. It was it would always be a circlet or a diadem or something like that. Uh I'm I'm probably paraphrasing this wrong or whatever, but um uh, Macro had posted a video about something like that. So and I and that's weird. I, I wonder 
how that could be possible in Diablo 2 Resurrected, do you know what it probably is? I'm thinking is that that's how it always was, but you didn't have, um, you know how you could re-roll and re-roll and re-roll the gambling screen now? Back in the day, you couldn't. Yep. So, so you probably right. wouldn't be able to notice that pattern unless you had the possibility to re-roll a screen and leave that particular one up on screen and gamble 300 of the same right. circlet or whatever, you know? So Well, I mean, the gambling also worked a little different in LOD. Um, you know, and I, I hate to burst anyone's bubble because I know, like... There's so many people that talk about this and truly believe that the same engine is running in the background and they're just like, oh, it's still the same game. I can promise you it is not. It is a complete remake of this game. And there are certain things that don't work the same, you know, and that it's not the same engine that's running this. Like, And gambling is a perfect example, right? Like, so if you were if you were gambling on circlets in LOD, you were always getting that like you wouldn't you could always get an upgraded circle you, you could get that but the class wouldn't switch on you like it does with coronets or whatnot it wouldn't switch to a circlet right like they were uh, yeah, different yeah. things they were very different things and it seems like they're kind of interchangeable in d2r mm -hmm. um there's other things such as this like superstitious rng thing that we've figured out that may suggest if i may put some of my some of my programming knowledge to it, it may suggest that the call in the coding that calls for a random number works differently and consistently in, in D2R, like, which was not the case in, in LOD. It did, especially on Battle.net. Like, you know, it, it, it was just random. You know what I mean? There was no... I had plenty of superstitious things I did in LOD that were clearly not didn't bear any fruit like they were clearly random you know i was just i was just being stupid like uh, hiring emilio as my mercenary like you know what i mean superstition love I was emilio. Just like, he's love the best it. love guy. emilio he's the best guy emilio! I've, met, I, I've met all of these mercenaries you know it was clearly superstition you know i was just just messing around but like this one it was a you know it was a pattern that i developed out of superstition and we like literally smashed it to the test today and like hmm. went over the top with luck. Like it was just, and so, but it suggests that in the coding somewhere, the call that makes a random, uh, that calls for a random number to be generated is based on something that's predictable. Yeah. And, well, you know, so it's. And I'm not saying that, that that's necessarily wrong, but there is actually a lot of stuff with Diablo 2 original that, that's like that, where you think that things are random, but they're really not. Like, um, I've watched, or a lot of people have done this, where on single player, because you have static maps, on, on multiplayer, you, you have different maps, so you can't do this, but you'll farm um, weapons racks or armors racks, which you, you've probably seen before. I've watched, uh, I actually watched a stream of BT Neanderthal, farming a armor rack from LK for a Shaco where if if you came in if you, from the waypoint if you came in and came down to the weapons rack it would be um one thing but if you teleported down and came up to the armor rack it would be a Shaco every time so depending on so, on so which way you came towards the the armor rack it would be a different item every single time though yep, it would so, be uh, an item and that was I on regular Diablo related. 2 Oh really? No kidding. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, I was gonna say if that's in D two, I've heard of people approaching uh, approaching armor racks from different angles and getting different results. I've heard of that, and I I had wondered if it was like related. Because, yeah, that was. Uh, uh, this was probably two years ago. I was watching BT do that uh, on his stream or whatever, and I I actually did in a video. Um, I did a uh, starting a new character uh, sorceress thing where I was actually farming Mephisto, and I just happened to decide to go over and hit the armor rack and the weapon rack that are down to the left and the right of Mephisto. And the one started dropping a thresher every time. And, uh, and then eventually I started hitting it and like four out of five times they dropped a thresher, boom, thresher, 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 thresher. So I started wow. getting, yeah, I started, I grabbed all the ethereal threshers, but actually it was crazy. I did like two, I can't remember if I did 250 or 500 runs. I did not get a single four socketed ethereal thresher off of it though. And and like wow. and four, 
And it was kind of weird the way that this went because the first 100 or probably the first like 50 to 75 runs, I wasn't necessarily getting that. But probably around run like 100, I started getting threshers like four out of five times. And then at some point, it just seemed like it stopped. I don't know if I was coming from a different angle, you know, who knows exactly. But for like 100 or 150 or 200 runs straight, I was getting a thresher like four out of five times from one weapons rack. And this wow. was this was back, yeah, was uh, you know, when I was playing on Pluggy or whatever. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's kind of the case with anything that's random. Like, I think, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of, like, Vsauce's uh, v, Vsauce YouTube channel, but that guy does, like, a whole bunch of stuff. And he did this series with another content creator about what is random. And, like, there's, even in even in the coding world, right, where you would think that with computers and all of this stuff that we would be able to easily generate a random number right we're not it's only seemingly random yeah it's just you know, out of a large group of numbers random. and then it, it or or you know like it goes so away. for example in the coding in the coding right like uh so if you're if you're just a, a a person typing code in right you you might learn in javascript for example that there's certain calls you can make to call for a random number to be generated and that might be all you know as someone who writes that code but the person that wrote that program knows that you're going to be running this on a PC or some sort of computer that is keeping track of time. So it's going to have that method. It's going to call, it's going to use that method that you're just typing in like math.random, right? But that random number call is going to reference something on your machine for a starting point. So at that point, you have referenced something that can be manipulated and the number is no longer random. You know what I mean? So it's like, and that's what it boils down to. Like, it, even if, if you've referenced something that was not random, it is not random. And, like, it can be manipulated. And, you know, so because, and it's not, it doesn't stop there. Like, there, a lot of those calls also reference other things to try to make things more random, but essentially they do the opposite. When you bring in more variables that you're basing it on, it's even less random, hmm. you know? So... Yeah, so, and that's that's how a lot of coding works. And I can almost promise you it's how it works in, in D2R. Like all of these calls in the coding are referencing something. And they're, you know, they're saying, you know, it might be, what time of the day is it? What, uh, what second on the clock is it? What, uh, you know, what's this character's name? You know what I mean? What does it start with huh. or, or something? So you like, think, you know, and, and you have and, no more knowledge on this. I'm pretty positive than I do. I, I don't really know hardly anything about anything. When as regards to this, but you think that's really how it works? Like the, it might just like they might program it to re, like what is the first letter of this character's name, and then that will be the start point for randomly generating the number for the thing, or, or like or like you like you said the time you use it for example. Like you think that they just pick yeah, some random I'm just, thing. I'm just throwing out examples as to things that it could be. Okay. Like you know, it, it, I'm I'm not saying like oh it's definitely the first letter of the name of your character. Oh or yeah. It's definitely. Oh yeah, the yeah, time yeah. On the clock. I wasn't insinuating like, you know how they program the game, something. but yeah. Yeah, I I can promise you it works like that. It 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 will reference something that is not random. You know, and that's because it needs a starting point, right? Like the engine itself needs a starting point. If you tell a computer to generate something random, like you got to think about it, like talking to somebody who knows nothing, right? Like, you know what I mean? You know absolutely nothing. And you say, generate a random number. What do you mean? What is random? You know what I mean? Like, what is a number? You know what I mean? So instead, if you're talking to a computer and telling it to do literal steps and steps and steps of things, you might have to tell it, Hey, you know that number that you have stored on the computer here? Okay, take that, multiply it by 72, divide it by this, and then round that down to a number in this range that I give you. And that's what it's going to do. So it's like, okay, so I have this starting point. I'm going to do all mm. of this stuff with that starting point, and I'm going to land it in that range. Like, that's what random is. I'm a computer, and now I know what to do. Like, so it's, it, it's, it needs a starting point, like something to go off from. You know, and that's, you know, unless gotcha. unless eons of coding has, you know, has evolved in the last few weeks, like that's, <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah, um, unless they know. have some like high tech so, AI in Diablo 2, which obviously yeah. is not going to be the case. a lot of times case. we won't know. Yeah, a lot of times we won't know how how it works. They're not going to tell you that. Like, you know, that's, that's not going to be not, even yeah. abundantly clear to the programmers. It might not even be abundantly clear to the programmers how it works. 
you know, it's, it's, they're just using, they're mm -hmm. using a software. It could be unity. It could be, you know, a, a variety of different things that have a, a random call in them that they have no control over, you know? So unless they've built the random engine or the, the engine that's running the random call themselves, they won't know how it goes. Like they won't, they won't know exactly what it's basing it on. They won't know what numbers being called on the machine, you know? So it's, it's a lot of things in life that we, think are random, you know, especially with computers, I should say, it's just a limit to that, you know, they're, right. they're, they're not random. Yeah. Hey, Cooley, I was, I was, I'm going to ask you a question from my chat. Someone was asking, uh, where do you stream at nowadays? Um, some people were like, cause you used to stream on Twitch. I think you still stream on Twitch a little bit, but some people you stream on Facebook, right? Yeah. Uh, Facebook gaming is where I'm at now. I've got a partnership with those guys. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped about it. Uh, but it's just, if you want to get there uh, to that link, it's just fb.gg slash Cooley with three O's D2. So fb.gg slash Cooley D2. Um, and that will, that will bring you there currently streaming there right now. We got two streams going up at once, attacking the world from two different angles. Right. But yeah. I, I also, um, I also do, uh, I, I do still stream on Twitch every once in a while. My schedule's a lot less predictable on there now. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll just be feeling it one night. And, I seen you. you know, didn't you hop on there uh, last Twitch. night, I think? For for like a little bit? I don't know. I lose track of all time these days. I was uh, going to say, but... if you're stream, <laughs> yeah. as much as you stream on Facebook and you put in some work over there, I can't imagine you, like, obviously you do, but like you find time to stream on Twitch sometimes too. That's, uh, I know you're putting in a lot of work, man. I can uh, appreciate the effort for sure. Thanks, man. But yeah, that's uh, those are those are the two places I do it at. I'm definitely over on uh, Facebook gaming a lot more now. I put in put in a lot of time over here, um, over here, over over there, depending on where you're watching from. Right. Um, yeah. You know, and so. Anyone in my chat, uh, uh, when I eventually I'm going to I haven't decided if I want to post a full thing or if I'm just going to do clips or not. But links to Cooley stuff I'll put in the description if you guys want to find him over there. So uh, Appreciate that, man. and I got a. Shout out here, um, Wahid, the the Act Two mercenary Wahid. Everybody loves Wahid. I just want to throw that out there. Wahid, Fazel, Hazim, just there's there's just mega love for the Act Two mercenaries. So Emilio, everybody loves Emilio, but apparently there's a lot of love for these guys too over here. And I'll be honest, I've been known to dabble in my uh, Wahid as well. So. Yeah, I just think Emilio has a fun name to make fun of. So does Wahid, though. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like if you can, no matter what you're playing, if you can have fun with it, you're doing the right thing. You know what I mean? So when someone tells you you're doing something wrong, you just be like, well, I'm having fun. So how the fuck is it wrong? You know, <laughs> so if you... <laughs> So if you've got Wahid as your, there's plenty of jokes you can make about Wahid. Like, yeah, this guy was smoking too much Wahid to start, you know, <laughs> actually attacking Duriel on this Uber on this Uber run. That's uh, you know, then you're having you're having fun with it. You're doing the right thing. You know, Emilio just has one of those names. You can say it with a lot of conviction and pride, or you can say it like you know with a lot of you know with a lot of sadness and disappointment. You know, and it fits every situation. But also, uh, I have tried and tested this, and he is definitely the best uh, scientifically proven. For sure, yeah, Sci scientific, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, scientifically proven uh -huh. best one. So yeah, actually, say what I, you I seen. Want. Uh, actually, I seen Bill Gates. Actually, I he actually ran a supercomputer, and they had analyzed the Act Two mercenaries, and actually, yeah, Amelia was the most powerful. So. <laughs> and that was in the nice. IBM cloud yeah. and everything. So it was like legit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. See, sure. this, this superstition stuff that I have is really just always has merit to it. I don't know how, but you know, it's just <laughs> it's always got something. to Right, it. right, right. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw sure. a little, little bit of a personal question, getting into the brass tacks of who is Cooley exactly. What is your favorite type of music? Favorite type of music? Uh, well, believe it or not, I used to, I actually used to make music back in the day, um, way back in my teenage years. But uh, I actually have, it's so a So like question five years ago? Because, uh, five years ago. No, I appreciate that, man. No, but my receding hairline says far, far more than five I years I don't know anything ago. about receding hairlines. Uh, yeah, no, not at all. Yours looks great. Uh, you know, the, but I, I have a, I have a wide appreciation for like a lot of different kinds of music. If it's, if it sounds good, if it's very well composed, 
if it's uh you know there's a lot of things I, I almost feel like i pay attention to elements of music more than i do the music itself you know what i mean like the the feeling that you get the emotion that you get from a certain beat from certain you know songs lyrics instruments um i think it's all beautiful even the way that some people mix it um asmund gold tv does a uh, he, he's he's got a nice youtube channel and uh oftentimes in his outro songs some people don't do this like they don't and and if you're if you're doing it right, no one will notice. And it's like when you mix certain parts of the song to jump into other parts, like and no one notices that you did it. Asmund Gold does that. And, uh, you know, I can appreciate it. Um, you know, so just there's a lot of different types. But I would say if I'm like jamming in my car, like and I'm just like, all right, man. Yeah, the stuff that I'm really gets you crunk, today. you know, like you're ready to you have yep. like some beers back. You're ready to just ugh, go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say a uh, big hip hop fan, hip hop rap. Um, you know, big uh, big fan of that. I like the you know as far as instruments goes and things that that move me. I really like uh, those deep bass lines, heavy percussion hits, um, strings. Big fan of those. And hip hop music has a lot of those elements in it. Um, you know, also though, I feel like country music is also pretty dope there's some country songs that i'm a fan of there's uh some heavy metal uh, rock songs that i like i was a big fan of lincoln park back in the day um you know and of course they had a rapper in the group too so like you know oh right yeah mike really yeah let's go but uh yeah exactly mike mike shinoda man fort fort minor yeah, yeah i was, was a big uh, lincoln park fan really back stuff. in the day i i will never forget being See, I always think I'm younger than I really was, but I feel like I, 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 I'm like, man, when I was like in seventh grade, but I was probably like a sophomore or junior in high school. I remember getting up when MTV used to play music and when you'd get up in the morning, there would be music videos on and I'll never forget, you know, Chester upside down under the bridge. Everything you say to me, you know, like the red, <laughs> yeah, he, a pretty good impression. he had the blonde hair, Mike had the red hair, you know. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was where it was at back in the day, Lincoln Park, you know. Yep, yep. That's what I sure, was. Uh, yeah, that's that. I had a friend back in the day that that got me into like rock music, and I uh, it stuck with me forever. Like I, I was more like the mainstream. I, I don't know. I want to say mellow or whatever, because when I first got into rock, my first, I'll, my first three albums I ever bought, I bought Godsmack first album just self-titled godsmack disturbed and power man 5000 so that that's where i started off and uh just went uphill from there you know what i'm saying like ready to rock you know hell yeah someone in, uh, someone in my chat goes wait music television used to have music on it <laughs> who could imagine yeah back in the days when mtv actually played music remember yeah. they did that it's like, like yeah it's sad you gotta say that nowadays yeah it was like a progressive walking away from it, though. Like, eventually, it was all reality shows, like uh, mm -hmm. Real World Road Rules and stuff like that. They'd air during the day. Uh -huh. And it was only at, like, 2 a.m. that you could listen to the, you know, any any music that you'd like. Like, I was, you know, it was it was always the case. You'd fall asleep with MTV on, and you'd be like, holy shit, music is playing. Yeah. Like, you know, eventually. There you, it is. You there wake up is. to, I like, Headbangers Ball or something, you know? Like... <laughs> exactly man exactly so, i mean i would say that so what i mean i would take it just from the music on your streams and stuff probably like you're still pretty heavy into like the rock music and stuff and you know for, is that, for is that sure i am i uh i can't make it to as many shows nowadays as i want to but it was kind of a, a big deal and this is like kind of a little bit of personal story from my end but i bought tickets for silverstein is like emo screamo i know it's a little bit girly band but i love them deal Emo with it I, I love that the e i call it i i call it like uh i call it that almost like uh like it's okay for me to make fun of it because i love it you know what i'm saying so it's the emo oh, yeah. emo screamo i love silverstein i bought tickets for their their second album discovering the waterfront they're probably their best one in my opinion and uh it was their 20th anniversary of that album and then covid hit got postponed, got postponed, got postponed four times. And then when it officially got postponed, that was the day of our wedding, you know? So I got married a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So I ended up having to... Congrats, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you very much. I ended up having to sell the ticket, obviously. I bought a solo ticket, and then I... 
And this is what I do from now on. I buy one ticket for myself, and then I try to talk people into into going with me. And I've gone, <laughs> I've gone to shows by myself, and it is actually a great time. You're not tied down. You go get a beer. You go over here. You talk to these people. You talk to that people. You rage a little bit. You know, you get up there, make it happen. And uh, but obviously, I'm not skipping my wedding to go to a concert or whatever. But my fiance is such a doll that she actually had a Silverstein song for our first dance. They did. Um, they remade. Well, the the lead singer, anyways, Shane told remade the song by Elvis and we did that for our first song so it was it was pretty legendary yeah that's sick dude right yeah that is really cool like that is really cool I I think uh that you know the the me the meaning of music and when you have the most appreciation for music is when it has a, a a special meaning to you you know what I mean and like that well delivered on uh the 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 wife right there that was well done man she's a she keeper you can keep her around yeah and the crazier thing there's it actually gets a little bit crazier because she actually because they were actually playing like 20 minutes from our hall or whatever she was in contact with their manager or whatever trying to like talk them into to like like a PR stunt, like stop in at our wedding and like, you know, a viral type moment thing, but they, it ended, you know, she couldn't swing it or whatever, but it's, uh, wow. You know, that's, it, it's crazy that she put yeah. that much effort into it. Like she's, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting a little blushy here. I'm talking about her. Am I? <laughs> no, that's fine, man. I'm a wicked emotional person myself. So don't you worry. I think that stuff is awesome. I, I, I just, Max uh, says, uh, why would people make fun of anyone for loving the music they grew up with? I, I you know, uh, I'll, I'll tell you how, because uh, you can totally make fun of me for this. I actually still every once in a while when it pops up on my YouTube, I will listen to Jeannie in a bottle from Christina Aguilera. Funny fact about that. Did you know that she did that song in fucking Spanish? Like I had no idea. She did a whole different version of that where she reshot scenes of it and stuff and did the song in Spanish. Um, I don't know why. It's nuts. I don't know why, but yes, I did know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, but, all right. No, you can make, I, you can I don't know why. Both of us now. So we both, I feel like if you know I mean, that, I don't listen to it regularly or anything, but... <laughs> uh, it's is, still pretty jammed. Is it better in lie. Spanish a, or in English? What do you think? Uh, I don't think it rhymes as much in Spanish. Like, it just, you know, I'm sitting there, like, me being me, I'm like, does this song even rhyme? <laughs> I'm just, like, listening. I'm like, all right. She said the O. I don't know what she's saying, but she said the O sound there, and I'm waiting for another O. Ah, uh, no shit. I don't know what sound that was, but it was not an O. Like, you know, I, I don't know if uh, – I don't listen to a lot of Spanish music. I think, like, Despacito was the closest thing that right. I ever played on my radio. Same season. And, like, yeah, that, sound, that sounds like it rhymed. I was like, that was pretty well well done, well put together. You know, good songs will traverse languages and all of that stuff anyway. But, you know, it, it didn't seem like it was meant to be sung in Spanish, if I'm not lying. It was it was a little odd. Gotcha, gotcha. But still cool. I mean, it's Christina Aguilera from the 90s, though. That was, you know, she was she was where it was at, man. That was like the days of fucking boy bands and shit. You had NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. You had like yeah. Christina Aguilera. And she was getting Spears, dirty, you know? That one went. As, that's how people figured out what fame looks like when it goes to your head right there was uh was Britney Spears. That is that is very true. So when you uh when you're talking about country, uh is it like like modern country, like the Dirk Bentley, uh Kenny Chesney type stuff, or or is it like I, I assume you're probably talking about more of the modern modern country type stuff, right? Um, anything that sounds good, anything that sounds good is, uh, well, well composed. Um, you know, uh, who's the guy I'm trying to think I jam out to this guy all the time, mainly because, uh, you know, um, he's, he has an amazing voice, very powerful dude. And he's like against the grain. Um, it's guy sings that sings hurricane. Um, who am I thinking of pop quiz for the chat? Guy who sings, who sings Hurricane? I got a computer right here. I can Google. Who it. sings Hurricane? Yeah, I'm not going to help you out a lot with modern country. I, I, I know it, but it's this like, is a, this know, is a question. Uh, it was a softball. It, it, I was lobbing it up to you, lobbing it. Uh, who sings Hurricane? Uh, Luke Combs. Luke Combs. Oh, Luke Combs. That's who it is. I don't know if I uh, Combs, if yeah. I froze in your in your video. 
on my end. Uh, oh, I unfroze. Never mind. Yeah, it's, I, I minimized the window, so it was my fault. Oh, I'm, um, I'm picking yeah, up Chilean. But, no, it's, yeah, Luke Luke Combs, man. Uh, you know, I, I love that. Sound. He's like one that pops into my head because, uh, like, it, I mean, this is this is what I appreciate. It has a very powerful voice. The way that he puts together, the, the way that the music is composed in his songs is very deep. Uh, and he's a very emotional singer. I can relate to like the emotional people, right? He can sing a song and make you laugh, make you cry. But here's what I love about Luke Combs. This is gonna sound really mean, but I don't mean it to be this, right? I don't mean this to sound mean. He does not look like your traditional like Hollywood, you know, I'm famous and you know, overly attractive and I've got perfect hair and all of this stuff. It's kind of like thumbnails for some of his videos he's got like an overgrown like scrubby beard and shit and like he's just i've definitely heard the name but i couldn't picture. i couldn't picture him so like when you hear his voice it doesn't match what you see like when you see this guy like it's not what you one of those people if you just heard his voice or heard his songs on the radio you'd never think like this guy looks like this but like it, it, the reason i appreciate that is because you know that just like you know just like you know, myself, I probably got some people to appreciate what I do because of the quality of what I do, hopefully, and definitely not because of my looks. You know what I mean? And so like it, it's it sounds mean, but I don't mean it to be like it. It really drives the point home that this guy's music speaks loudly for him. You know what I mean? He's very talented, very, you know, the way that he puts things together is just insanely good. And, you know, so his talent speaks louder than anything else, which that's kind of what I mean to say. And I know there's no way, no nice way to say that, but like it's, it's a way to illustrate how talented this guy is. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. For, uh, for me personally, and this is just like personal preference, don't mean to alienate any of the chat or anything, but I'm, I'm more of like the old school, almost and the thing is is that the old school country is actually like worse it's like not as well made and not as good put together but it just seems more authentic in my like perspective forever when you uh you know back to the hank williams johnny cash willie nelson original you know type stuff you know it just seems uh and, and it's weird uh when you're like the heavy metal type stuff and you go to like the old school country I don't know what it is, but the old school country just really speaks to like authenticity. You know what I'm saying? No nowadays, the modern country just seems, um, I don't know. And and I'll be honest, I don't listen to all of the 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 modern country. That's not what I really am into. But it just seems like they're going down a lane. You know, like let's make a song about drinking. Let's make a song about girls in the summertime. Uh, let's tailgate sitting beer sipping moonlight you know you, you, you're picking up on laying yeah. down you know there's like certain key words i think they just show up in so many country songs that's like when i listen to a luke bryan song these days he it's knows. all like he knows yeah i'm telling you there's like certain keywords he's talking about oh let's, let's all hop in the truck and drink beer i'm like cruising down the dirt road the yeah, I'm just like, God damn it, dude. Do you just, do you have, yeah. like, have you ever seen that? That guy's probably South never Park seen a dirt make... road before. Like, let's go. When, you, when you're oh going up, when they haven't graded the dirt road in a while, and, and you're like, because you're going too fast, you know, and it gets real <laughs> right. washboarded, you know, he's never even seen yeah, that before. I feel, I feel like they have a, they have like a word bank of shit that they choose from. Have you mm -hmm. seen that episode of South Park where they make fun of the creators of Family Guy and it's like a bunch of manatees that swim in a tank and they push words to a, another side of the, of the tank. There's like a <laughs> random. <laughs> so no, I, like, I have not, but yeah. I, I do. I love, they, I love so Family Guy and I love South Park. So it's kind of like a, uh, but South Park so, was so they uh, come up, original they come love. Up with these random ass jokes from like these manatees pushing pushing word balls from one side of the tank to the other, and then at the end of it, it spits out a Family Guy joke. So like you know they make these jokes, and it's like you know it's seemingly random words. For example, oh yeah, that reminds me of the time I got a fish hat from Muhammad. Like you know what I mean? And it's like exactly. <laughs> Like they, they do a great job of like showing exactly like, and it seems like that very well could be the case. 
I hear those songs like you know that just mention these keywords tailgate and like all of this stuff the and things I'm like, that I mentioned this yeah. is exactly you guys have a bunch of manatees like pushing fucking words into your lyrics like they have to be that it's all I can think about when I hear that like overused shit I'm like no no thanks no thanks I guess I'm when you got go, writers that go it's like they're like jobber writers you know and it's like this works like just talk about doing shots of fireball and like you know, oh, you look so cute in your white T-shirt and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, yeah, white T-shirt. That's another one. That's another one. Yep. Oh, my yeah. gosh. You know, anything oh that's gosh. like cheap, like, man, uh, country music. I don't know. That, that's what modern day country music is. Uh, it's real hit or miss. I, I'll to be generous. I'll say yeah. that it's hit or miss. <laughs> yeah, music's got to music's got to mean something, dude. It's got to like it's got to make you feel something. That is the point of music. You need mm-hmm. to you need to evoke a feeling, and that's why they probably use all of these words because you know the the drunkards that are listening to them are probably like, yeah, man, I, I tailgate, fuck yeah, <laughs> like you know what I mean. But like a person it, who's really, never sat like, on a tailgate, it, it, they're like they're like with their <laughs> girls at like. Uh, whatever giant festival country thing they're at, like right in their mom's Volvo down there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But like, I mean, a good, a good piece that's going to like survive the test of time. I think is going to make you feel something like, you know, when you hear free bird, you feel something, you know what I mean? Like you feel something with it. That's like going to survive the test of time. You know, when you hear a lot of Michael Jackson songs, they make you feel something, you know, there's a certain feeling that you get. It was different. Like, you know, that's the, th- that's the thing music, good music should do whether, you know, and, and same with like Lincoln park, you know, same with, uh, you know, just like, uh, there's, there's a lot of, uh, like Aerosmith too. Like there's certain things you can feel the emotion. Um, mm-hmm. Eminem is also a, a, a phenomenal I, artist. I, I do love Eminem. I'll, I'll be honest. It's, it's crazy. Cause I like like the metal and stuff. And I know that I'm from around Detroit. So it's a little cliche. I was going to say like, it's a little Detroit, cliche. What? Of course you <laughs> Kid Rock, Eminem, I guarantee you, well, is a oh, top two this, artists. This will give me a little more credibility. I hate Kid Rock. I cannot stand Kid Rock. All right. But all right, I do love enough. Eminem. And, uh, I mean, uh, he was a little hit or miss there for a little bit. You know, obviously, <laughs> you know, when he got into all the accents, in he got into all the accents and stuff right when he sobered up. But I feel like he's gotten it back a little bit. But, uh, Really, a lot of his best songs were like unreleased songs from back in the day, like the diss tracks and stuff were uh, were real crazy back in the day. And that was like stuff I'm downloading off of like Napster and LimeWire, you know, like, uh, yep, you know, I remember that stuff. Yeah, I was like downloading yep. it because I was like the only person that had high speed inter- internet back in the day because my dad was like into computers oh, yeah. and stuff. So I would like download music and burn CDs for people and stuff or um, I had a friend and you brought up South Park. We used to have, um, well, I guess nobody knows his whole name, so it's fine. We called it Weaver Wednesdays. We would go over to his house. His last name was Weaver. And we'd go over to his house, and we'd play beer pong and watch South Park on Wednesdays when I was like 19, 20, 21, 22, you know? Fucking right. Um, so I, because I had, like, I knew older people that could buy us alcohol or whatever. So we'd get beer. Perfect. Pound beers, play beer pong, watch South Park every Wednesday when the new episode came out. And then actually what happened is he actually got a job at the same place I worked. That was crazy. Just crazy. When we're like, I'm 20, he's like 18, 19 years old. And we're pounding beers on Wednesday, getting getting to work like three hours after we like I left his house, you know, stuff like that. That was, uh, those were the days. But, oh yeah, man. It's crazy. No, I mean, that's <laughs> it's like what I was, like I was saying, man. Like that's that's a certain feeling you had in your life. You know what I mean? A certain experience, and like it's truly when music evokes that stuff. And that's why Eminem is just like, in my opinion, one yeah. of the greatest artists. That guy, he was one of those one of those people that like, if you liked him and you liked his music, you felt something, right? Like you could feel anger a lot of times. You could feel the emotion that he put into the song. Yeah, and he had a lot of people different that songs. Hated yeah. This shit, the people that hated the shit that he was saying, well, he still made him feel something, right? Like he made him feel that hatred, you know. And it's like, love it or love it or not, that feeling is is what you got. You got some feeling from it, and mm-hmm. it's gonna survive the test of time, man. And plus, that guy was like so talented too. I got to tell you, you're breeding him good in Detroit. Those rappers, man, <laughs> fucking uh, 
Like, I mean, even in even in the song "Till I Collapse," like every single syllable of his of his sentence, like in the third verse, was like rhy- was rhymed every single syllable. I'm like, there's no rappers do this. They just rhyme about like you know, I'm gonna rhyme one word with another word that's one syllable, and sometimes that is gonna be the same word that I just used. You know, like an Eminem's word bank was just like outrageous. Like, and you know, he, a guy was just talented, man. Talented on top of like the feeling, you know? And yeah. He, uh, and he had songs that were like a bunch of different, uh, types of like emotional say, cause he would do songs that were just straight up funny. He would do songs that were super serious. He would do songs that were straight up anger. You know, he would, um, touch all different types of the emotional spectrum that you're talking about. And, uh, yeah, like there, there definitely was, you know, I, I haven't uh, seen in the chat or whatever, but I'm sure there's tons of people like there was definitely a segment there where some of the songs he was putting out weren't necessarily the best, but it's hard to, it's, it's hard to be perfect forever, you know, and especially when you're going through like trying to get through sobriety and manage a career like that. There was definitely a segment in there where he an album or two were not the greatest, but some of the ones at the start, like were so funny. Like the funny songs are like, it, it makes like he's funny without even being funny. Just talking about the real life stuff that he had went through. Obviously he's probably, probably embellishing a lot of it or whatever, but it's so freaking hilarious. Oh man, he's just so good. Like, you know, he, he says one line and is one of D12's albums that he uh, that he put out. He's like, he's like, and when my principal would tell me that I was nothing and I wouldn't amount to shit, I made my first million and counted it. And I was like, oh fuck, man. Like, you can't help but be like, yeah, fuck, go Eminem. Like, that's awesome, man. <laughs> you've, had a, you've had a rough life. You've had a rough life, sir. I'm glad you beat it. That's awesome. Yeah, just, yeah, it's crazy, man. Mm. It's, uh, but I, I think you're right with like the sobriety and stuff and getting getting over that. I, I feel like it reminds me of uh, it reminds me of like just certain people that blew up and didn't know what to do with the fame. I feel like Eminem was one of those those guys like reminds me of Chuck Liddell when he was big in the UFC. Like he was just more about his celebrity towards the end of it and end up fucking up fights and like, you know, just getting KO'd. <laughs> like mm-hmm. he was, and granted, he was getting old, too, but like. Yeah, there's just it, right. it's a it's a weird life, man. That's that's a that's a weird life. I, I feel like UFC is actually even harder than like almost any other because like you have to be so dedicated. People are literally coming to kill you. Like they're literally coming to beat you down. You have to be tied in to your training and everything you're doing like crazy. And if you get and the same thing happened to Connor, it seems anyways. I'm not like a UFC expert. But that seems oh, like sure. what happened with Connor. Like you get in too much into celebrities. You're worrying about your vodka brand. You're worrying about um, what's going on over here, over there. I think Connor uh, didn't he have a he had a kid, right? Too uh, kind of in the midst of of his uh, span or whatever. I think. But uh, if you have too much yeah. stuff going on, like UFC, you have to be so committed to it. I feel like that's the most committed you have to be. For almost any profession, even like football, basketball, any other sport or anything, because it's Connor got so rich, demanding. Man. Connor got Connor got way more than hood rich. He got like a hundred million from his fight with Floyd Floyd Mayweather. Oh, yeah, and I don't care yeah. what kind of human I don't care what kind of human you are. When you get when you get a hundred million dollars, yeah. you become you become a shit slinging monkey with money. Yeah, like you, you know what I mean? You get it's FU money. Like, yeah, you get that fu money, man. He didn't, he didn't give a shit. But I mean, you could tell, yeah. like he's he's kind of he's kind of gone downhill. I mean, he's got nothing left to prove at this point, really. Like, right. you know, say what you want about him. All, uh, everyone that hates on him, he's fucking just like, okay, yeah, I've got a hundred million dollars. Like, you know what I mean? Fuck you. Yeah, he <laughs> no, could no, literally like <laughs> he could literally like walk into the White House and like the uh, you know the Secret Service could be like, hey, stop, and he'd be like, you know what? This finger black, <laughs> yeah. blacked out. You know, I'm yeah. walking in here. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, man. It, it's crazy. That's uh, that's nuts, man. Like that's a dream. I think if I was Connor and like I got a hundred million dollars and like I would never step into the octagon or the ring ever again. Like, 
you know, it, it's like you said, people are coming to kill you, dude. Like, and especially <laughs> now that you're like so famous and stuff, like you're going to get your brains beat in when you've like already be, you've you've won life like you won. You know what I mean? You got the hundred mil. You don't owe anybody anything like at that point, just preserve your mind, man. There ain't no sense of getting like KO'd or getting concussions that are going to last like right. the rest of your life. Like, I would do like uh, what, what's uh, Mayweather doing? I forget that. I forget those kids names. Those those uh, YouTube guys that he's fighting nowadays. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Logan Paul and Jake Paul. Yeah. The Paul brothers. Yeah. yeah. I would fight them every other weekend. Or I would just oh, like man. name some other random. I would fight Mr. Beast or something. I don't know. Like like I don't know Mr. <laughs> Beast. Well, we would be way out of weight classes, but still like, <laughs> like. Well, yeah. I mean, like that's that's. It. I feel like boxing these days is has oddly enough become a meme. Like it's become a yeah, meme sport because very much, because yeah. MMA just kind of like MMA is like the real fighting. Like you know when it came out, there was a lot of shit talking about it, especially from like the boxing commission and shit. Until people realized like, okay, this is real fighting. Like, you know what I mean? This is, like, very transferable. Yeah, it's way more exciting, and it's actual. way more... I feel like it's way more technical. Um, Different... Any sport, in, like boxing or really any sport... We'll, we'll, I'll go for a soccer example. Things that are too much defense and not enough scoring, there's not enough, like, happening in it. it it's not exciting enough for people. UFC, Oh yeah. if you're, like... Even if you're on the ground game and you're grappled up, there could be... You, you advance the side control and then you're going to advance to a full mount. Like there's just little things like that that yeah, are like Ezekiel chokes and stuff from being mounted or like, you know, in full guard, like just nabbing Ezekiel choke with your opponent on top. And it's like first time I saw one of those, I was like, what just happened? Like, you know what I mean? Like, teach me how to do that. Like, this guy was getting dominated and the other guy on top tapped out. Like, what? <laughs> like, right. What just happened? I feel like with with UFC, yeah, like, it's, um, it doesn't happen all the time, like, anymore necessarily. Like, the last 10 years, it happened a lot more. But, and going on in the future, it's going to be a little bit less. But the there is room for progression in UFC, like, all of a sudden, there's some guy, I can't remember his name now, but there's some guy that he literally starts to fight and he lays down on his back. And then um, he waits for the guys to charge him and he just takes him out. Or, um, gosh, I wish I could remember this there's other guy's name. Hoist Gracie back in the day. You oh, yeah, Hoist Gracie. Like shoot in. Um, there's, a, yeah. there's a newer guy where he would, he would dive, he would dive down to his right shoulder and try to hook their heel. And he would just do it over and over again. Um, yep. And they would um, keep running away. Ryan, uh, what's his last name? Ryan something. Yeah, he would just go for heel hooks all the time. He got KO'd uh, in his in his most recent. Yeah, fight. I did. That's I did a, watch a, that. I, a, I really hated watching him because he Ryan kept, Hall. He kept. Yeah, Ryan Hall. Yeah, yeah. He kept doing the same thing over and over again. It was like super successful at the beginning, obviously, because people didn't really know how to right. defend it, but then they would jump back and then they would stomp at his head or whatever. But uh, there, there's always, there's room for improvement in the sport. And I feel like, um, and actually I'm going to tie this back to something that I used to love a lot, skateboarding back in the day when it was yep. like 2000 to two. I got too big to skateboard for a little bit. Cause I got like, now I'm 6'3", 225, which is too big for skateboarding. Yep. Like skateboards do not last long when you weigh two twenty five. They snap in a hurry, in a hurry. But when I was like one six six three though, I holy shit, I wouldn't have put you at that tall if I'm being honest. Well, no shit. well, you know, when I, when I was like six foot, like one forty, back when I was like a freshman in high school, that's when I was sick at skateboarding, like Tony Hawk size, you know. So. uh yeah, that that was back when like progression and skateboarding. It was like, oh my gosh, they're doing like a nine hundred. This is crazy, you know. You know, there was actually progression in the sport. It was super exciting. But with skateboarding, yeah. the progression stopped because you can only do so much. You can only spin so many times. You can only do so many tricks or whatever. I feel like UFC is there. It's almost at the back end of that. But because you're like knocking people out and dropping them, it's obviously way more exciting than like skateboarding per se. But there still is room for progression in UFC, I feel. Yeah, I mean, there's it's it's like that with everything. I mean, we learn new stuff. There's there's the same thing. I hate to make this about Diablo, but like 
you, know, you hate, hate to make it about Diablo back to Diablo, but like, you know, it, it's, it's like that with anything. This game's been going on for like this thing. You know, I mean, how? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, this game has been out for 20 plus years and like, you know, people are still learning things about PVP or they were in, in LOD, you know, um, it's crazy. Even, even myself, I've been playing the game for a long time and like you learn tricks, you learn things, you know, weapon swap glitch was something that, you know, people who didn't understand it caught a lot of hate, but like, it, you know, it was a relatively new, like in comparison to, you know, when you think about how old PVP is and Diablo 2 is a relatively new thing. You know what I mean? That people finally figured out how to get out of an assassin mind blast lock. Like, you know what I mean? Years and years later, there's like always little things that, you know, especially the more complex shit that you add to it, like, you know, an MMA, like with takedowns with striking and all this stuff like the more shit people figure out over over time and it's like the stuff that's just tried and tested like scientifically you know broken down to scientifically its very components yeah exactly right <laughs> like scientifically broken down to its very core components and like i think there's still a lot of room for that in d2r too in in d2r like i'm finally uh you know we're hosting some tournaments some pvp tournaments on arena gl which is like six site by the way like if you ever do any competitions, man, like highly suggest it. Um, and they're not paying me to say that. Like it's it's fucking that, that place is insane. They give you arena tokens for participating in events. And like, mm. if I got to give you the inside scoop, hang on to those fucking things like they're cryptocurrency, dude. I swear. Oh yeah. Like you know, it's uh, like they're worth something. Is is some game theory? Oh man, I might have, I don't have to get on that. that. I, I do love myself some cryptocurrency. I'll be honest. So yeah. <laughs> I said, I said, like their crypto. I mean, they, oh. you basically can like you can do you, you can do some crazy shit with them. But like, but anyways, uh, you know, I say that to let you know, I'm, I'm doing some more PVP events on there. And like some of the rule sets that I've seen that have popped up have been like surprisingly different. You know what I mean? And it's like, yes, yeah, is a different game. People are still there's a lot of room to learn some stuff in, you know, in D2R as well. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see how it goes. Like, it's, it's going to be fun. You should do some PvP, man. Have you ever thought about... I heard you were jamming on Battle.net recently. Like, you were starting J up on Battle.net and making characters. Well, I mean, I'm on Battle.net. I, I do have characters on Battle.net, but I've never been a PvPer. Uh, it would definitely... It, I, I would be a work in progress, I guess, if I ever dabbled in PvP. Uh, yeah, I... Pretty much what I'm saying is we I, all are, I, I, I would be a I'm complete a joke. Progress. I've never been. No, so am I. I well, no, well, <laughs> so am I, no, don't go that. It. Don't like go this. that far. Come on, Cooley. Come on. But yeah, I've never. Well, no, it's like at no yeah. point in the past I never really did PvP, and uh, I don't know. It never. It it never really did anything for me. I I don't know. I I can't really say anything beyond that. I I just never really did it. I think I think a lot of people have that same that same sentiment. I was talking about that the other day that like they feel like they're not ready for it or their items aren't good enough or, you know, they just they might not be good enough. They might get beat. I can tell you, take them from someone that like when I started doing this, I go back and look at my old dueling videos and I'm like, what a fucking moron. Like, why did I do that? Like, you know what I mean? That is that's so bad. That's such a bad habit to do. I wasn't even swapping auras when I'm like charging around and I'm just like, what a noob. Like, you know what I mean? What a, like, I would love to duel that guy now, but like, you know, uh, but the point is I was still kicking a lot of ass, making a ton of mistakes. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, sure. You'll run into people you won't beat, but like, you know, it's, I think PVP is a lot more doable than people think like, you know, and, and is a lot more forgiving than people think, um, when it comes to like character builds and shit, especially in team dueling, which is really big right now. Like, you know, or it's it kind of always been big, but like, you know, jamming up on a team. Believe it or not, dude, I was uh, I was jamming some duels right before D2R launched. Actually, we like I I helped Extimus gear up a character. Like me and some people in the Discord, like got Extimus a character. He stepped into some team duels, dude. And like, granted, Extimus is like PVM legend, man. Like absolute legend. And his skills were very transferable to PvP. He actually did decently in team duels. Like you know, it was. As being part of a team, like so much is going on anyway, you kind of it's like more forgiving, you know, you can kind of explore your character and like he was actually doing good, like, you know, and that's and he doesn't PV, he didn't PVP much. He was telling me that before. And it's like, I, I think I think it was, you know, surprising 
for him, I, at least I got that feeling. It was like surprising for him how much it transferred into into PvP, like his skill with the character. Okay. So like, well, maybe yeah, maybe one day, you, maybe like one day said, you think, can teach me, maybe. Yeah, man, build a build a dude. I'm doing a lot of PVMing right now, anyway. Like, still trying to build up my build up my uh, dudes. I got absolute joke gear in in PvP right now, but uh, I still I still beat some people. I KO'd Maddie and got it recorded the other day. I was oh. so pumped. And I was like, yeah, easy, easy. But then. Uh, then then he posted a video of him killing me on his YouTube. So I mean whatever. Like, yeah, it is what it is. Like, you know, they don't got the full story. All right. They don't they don't know everything. <laughs> but that is funny. Yeah, that was but yeah, man. Alrighty, well, uh, we're sitting here at uh, eight o'clock local time. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on, Cooley? Anything you wanted to plug or anything? I think I might uh Go ahead and uh, hop this off real quick. I was going to set the time at an hour, but I was having such a good time. I, I couldn't cut it off at, yeah, at one hour. I feel like almost two hours is almost two hours, 15 minutes, actually. I, now I know what Joe ah, Rogan's damn. talking about when he has like guests on. And he's like, oh, my gosh, we're at like four hours. Like, I've, I've been having a great time sitting here talking to you. I'll be honest. Yeah, dude, same here. Right back at you, man. This was super fun. And like I said, I'm uh, I'm really happy that you're doing stuff like this. I hope it's something that you continue to do. I think this is uh, this is fun. I'm happy being a, a guest whenever you want me to, too, man. Love uh, love talking about this and uh, you know just shooting the breeze. I think it's I think it's fun. I love I uh, love this idea and this concept. And uh, keep it going, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm planning. I will. Uh, we'll see. It's crazy. Um even though I'm not really working nowadays, how much little time there is in the day. Like it's shocking. Yeah. Really is shocking. Life is short, man. Yeah. And I, I just want to give a quick shout out. Jonathan Dice came in with a uh, two months and a super chat. Thank you very much, Jonathan Dice. I just want to throw that out there real quick. So, Jonathan. Right. So uh, we'll go ahead and I think we're going to sign it off right now. It's about time. I got to put my daughter to bed as well. Pretty soon here. So, <laughs> Understandable, man. Understandable. GG. Cooley, thank you so much for chatting with me tonight. It's been awesome. And uh, I, I will guarantee if if you want to, which it, it sounds like you want to, I'm going to have you on again because this was amazingly yeah. fun. Uh, I'm going to come up with amazingly cool, amazing topics to talk about next time as well. Thick. <laughs> love it. And Love it, love it. Next, yeah, man, let me know. The whatever. next time Always we talk, down. come up with really funny questions to ask me too. Super funny, goofy stupid questions to ask me i love i don't know if you understand the charge you just threw at me man they're gonna be fucking off the wall you're gonna be yeah. turning redder than that background on your <laughs> on your logo man i don't know if you want me doing that well, well don't get, <laughs> no no don't, don't get too crazy you don't want to get banned from facebook or anything all right <laughs> oh so, sure, so now this is super fun thanks someone thanks asked me i'm gonna ask you one quick question before we go here the uh, the flavor yep. of vape you have in there, is it just like menthol, man? It's just standard menthol. menthol. Keeps your coils going for longer. Yep, just menthol. It's no uh, no special flavor to it. Really keeps your coils in service for longer. I'm a cheap bastard, man. You gotta soak it up wherever you can get it. Okay, I don't know what the, what that means. Keep your coils, but uh, I'll just I'll take your word on it. I'm not a uh, smoker of any of the things of sorts and stuff, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> for sure brother so all right sweet Phil. thanks so much yeah. man appreciate you it's been awesome cool and, uh, you're yeah, amazing for thank joining. you yeah thank you so much for uh, chatting with me all right hey absolutely take care guys peace out youtube peace out guys don't forget keep slaying Ooh. Ooh. damn straight on that note i'm fucking out of here <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to get slain all right. <laughs> peace out guys